Hi everybody, this is Christine Bertram and I'm coming to you live from the Hive here in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. And <laughs> we're ready for another Thursday stamping session. My doorbell was just going off. I don't know if you guys heard that, <laughs> but I'm also gonna try to find you so that I can follow along with all your amazing comments. Woohoo! Do you guys love my new shirt? <laughs> I bought it about a month ago and it's been sitting in a bag and I thought, oh, now is a good time to put it on and I feel really good. <laughs> Isn't it always nice to put on a new shirt? <laughs> And, and get something new. Hi, Lynn. So you guys are going to laugh, but I actually bought this shirt around Valentine's Day. It must have been the week before Valentine's Day because I thought, oh, I'm going to buy a red shirt so I can wear it on Valentine's Day. And do you think I even dressed up on Valentine's Day? No. <laughs> that was the weekend that my boyfriend Tyler and I went up to visit my brother Tom. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Jean. Hi, Melanie. And we just bummed around all weekend. <laughs> we didn't do much and I didn't wear a new shirt. So hi, Tiani. She just chugged a cup of coffee. Girl, I didn't do that. Hi, Angela. Hi, Carmen. <laughs> hi, Mary Carls. Tiani, that one day that I had coffee and you called me out on it, I was woohoo. <laughs> I was like, I can't have coffee right before class. Hi, Randy. I already have enough energy and bubbliness going on that caffeine doesn't help. <laughs> so, oh, Bella, Melanie's back in Yuma. Wow. Happy you're home. Hi, Judy Bobo. Hey, there's Bobby. You know, Bobby, it's so funny that you said bad internet today. <sighs> I got on about 20 minutes ago, not on here, but I came to sit down here about 20 minutes ago to get everything established, and it took me 15 minutes to do it. I had to, hi Jean, hi Kay, I had to shut down three times, and so I'm scared. <laughs> hi Sandy, hey Victoria. Oh yeah, you did call me out on it, Danny. Uh, so I'm very scared <laughs> that we're not gonna make it through tonight and that we're gonna have to do two part session. So I'm crossing my fingers and my toes that we're good to go. Uh, yeah, it, I don't know what finally made it work. Hi, Jay Shante. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, Jay, I've learned no coffee and no alcohol for this girl before she goes live. <laughs> I know it's not purple. <laughs> oh, yes. Catch the replay, Mary, whenever you can. Yes, I definitely am not wearing purple. I went for red and I clash with <laughs> everything around me. My shirt stands out. So, but I feel good. That's all that matters. So, <laughs> and it looks pretty. And Tyler's going to say to me, wow, that's red. <laughs> Hi, Christy. So, yeah, guys, as you come on, I love it when you say hi and let me know that you're on. Hi, Cheryl from Ohio. Uh, also, like, comment, and share. It's amazing how many more likes we've gotten since two weeks ago when we did the drawing. We're at least 30 more already, so it's so crazy. Slowly but surely, we are building our little community of stampers. Hi, Susie. So, oh, Kathy King is in the house. Woohoo! So, Kay's here as well. Okay, Marsha's here. Wow. Okay, so you guys, guess what? Guess what I did today? I ordered the catalogs. <laughs> Thank you, Danny. I, I, uh, I, I read a good caller. <laughs> so, hi, Mary. She said the embosser, you guys, so Mary just won the, I was just mentioning about the 2K likes. Um, she won the mini embosser at half off and it arrived yesterday. Hi, Brenda Wood. Hi, Amy. Um, Julie. Okay, so you guys, the annual catalogs got ordered today. Woo-hoo! So, they are going to be arriving late next week. And I was momentarily confused. And I realized it after the fact when I was doing a little Facebook Live on Sunday showcasing all the cards for April. And I was completely and utterly confused about not having the prizes in time for game night. And I don't know if anybody else caught that, that I was trying to order today and they weren't going to, or I was trying to order and they weren't going to be here in time. And well, game night's not until next week. Oh my gosh. It, like, so I think I was thinking in my head that the catalogs, I wanted the catalogs in time to mail with your packages. So I think that's where my disconnect was happening in my brain. But the good news is, hi, Mary, I will have the prizes in time. And I'm actually, they're set to arrive on Monday. And 
I'm trying to remember there's five prize packages. One of them is the Inspiring Thoughts Bundle, which is a scenery with trees and a canopy. And it's so cool. One of my favorite sets, actually. I got the Pansy Bundle. So if you guys are demonstrators and you're watching and you're doing game night with me, you woohoo. So you'll know what I'm talking about. For those that aren't demonstrators and don't know what I'm talking about, I can't show you what they look like in the catalog because we're not allowed to show the inside of the catalog until May 4th. Um, due to policies, but because my stuff arrives on Monday, as soon as I can, I will do a little live showcasing all the prize packages. So, hi Sue. Okay, so the Pansy Bundle, the Inspiring Thoughts Bundle, the Hand Pen Bundle, you guys, the new ink pads. I got a set of new ink pads as a prize. So there's five new ink colors, and one of the prizes for game night is the ink pads. And on top of it, one of the other prizes is all five of the uh, Stampin' Blends, so all five of the new in colors. So very cool prizes, I'm so excited. Um, I do have two spots left and five sets of cards. No, four sets of cards. So one of the things with game nights is that one of the things with the game night is you could add on a set of extra cards for $10. So if anybody signed up and wants an extra set of cards, I did mail out your packages today. Everything's in the mail. I'm so excited. It was such a happy dance. Um, I left, I got done with work around four and I went over to the post office and I dropped off like 30 packages. So you guys, I took a picture and I will be sharing it <laughs> um, soon. <laughs> I just didn't have a moment to after. So I will be sharing it. And if anybody, so that included game night got shipped out. The Butterfly Brilliance Ink Pad Scissors, Ink Paper Scissors class got mailed out. And then I also mailed out some April monthly classes. So if anybody signed up for game night and would like an extra set of cards, the deal was it was just $10 extra for a set of cards. So if I have four extra, plus I have two open spots because I have two goodie bags with the card kit. So if anybody wants to sign up for game night, it's the Dragonfly Garden Wishes or that, that bundle, Dragonfly Garden. So it's a stamp set and punch. And honestly, I threw in extra pieces of paper, uh, like cut out that you guys can cut out a dragonfly that you in essence wouldn't even need the dragonfly stamp. You could get by with some foliage and sentiments. So something to think about. Okay, so catalogs though. I should have them next week. And anybody who is a current customer of mine who has placed an order within the last, let's say six months to, I don't know, seven months, eight months, then you can expect to be getting a catalog in the mail for me if you're not a local customer to me, like I'm not a local peep. <laughs> so if you're local to me, I will have catalogs available for porch pickup the end of next week. So that's exciting. You guys, the new catalog starts May 4th. So as you guys know the retiring list was published. I went through and I did a live. If there's anything you want yet, you should start to think about getting it sooner rather than later. So um, just another update, the newsletter. It's April 1st, happy April Fool's Day. I won't be fooling you tonight, guys. I am not an April good, I am not a good April Foolser uh, at all. <laughs> I fall for it and I'm not good at making up stories uh, to trick people. So I won't be doing any April Fools with you tonight. So, um, so no April Fools that I will have the newsletter for you tomorrow or so. I'm, I'm working on putting together a product share for the new inks, no, the new papers, the new embellishments, and the new ribbons in the annual catalog. And how a product share works is you get uh, like a quarter or a, a portion of it or a sampling of everything. And I'm pricing that out and figuring out how it works. And so I want to get that published and then into the newsletter. So the newsletter, I, my goal is tomorrow, but it might be Saturday. So I know a few people look for that at the beginning of the month. So newsletter is coming, but um, <laughs> Danny or ordered two place two orders for retiring products. I love it. <laughs> You're not alone, girl. <laughs> um, the other thing that's exciting is I just put together my class schedule through August. So I had it in there through June with some of the things uh, not determined for June. So I picked the sweet bundle classes for June, July, and August. And I picked the ink, paper, scissors featuring stamp set bundle for June, July, and August. So you guys can go right now already if you want to my newsletter section and you can find my class schedule for now through August. August. So you can start planning ahead if you want. <laughs> um, so how it works for my bundle suite classes, I always try to publish that right away because if you use the buying of that bundle or the suite 
as your payment or RSVP for the class, you get a free gift from me. So it can't be used for any other classes fee, but let's say you want to sign up for the, the there's a, oh, oh, hang on. I can look down because I can look in the calendar. There's a new suite called Beauty of the Earth. And when you get the suite, which is at like 70 bucks, I will be giving a free, what was I going to do? I don't know. There was something. <laughs> it was about $7, a free gift. So if you sign up for that class, buy that suite, I give you a free gift with your um, your package. And how many of you have gotten free gifts? I know that like Tammy Steckling's gotten some ice cream sprinkles and few people have gotten, like Dara's gotten ribbon. People who buy the bundle for the RSVP for class um, get a free gift. So that's something I love to do. So the schedule's out there so you guys can start planning. Um, and <laughs> if you guys are uh, remotely like me, I, you'll plan a little bit to figure out what classes you wanna take. And then on that note too, with the new catalog is a scavenger hunt. Oh my gosh. So Jean Maxwell always loves getting the scavenger hunts. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Donna. Hi, Patty Spurlock. So the scavenger hunt is also in the works. Uh, so I will be including that with the newsletter when I email it out to my group. And I will also make it available on my Cards by Crispy website. So Free gifts are always fun. And Christy, you're in for a treat, not to ruin a surprise, but if you stay tuned to the end of our program tonight, you'll be so happy. <laughs> so, oh yeah. So I would like to thank everybody that has given me support through orders and also for my team. You guys, we knocked it out of the ballpark. Honestly, I have never had and I'm such an amazing quarter. Hi, Alan. I just saw your email about what you did to that embossing folder. <laughs> I'm curious if you put the uh, plate on top of the embossing folder or if you just had the embossing folder on the top. Your embossing folders get warped like that when you put them on top of the plates and not in between the plates. So I, that was a question I was going to have to you. So you guys, we knocked it out of the ballpark. We exceeded the my personal goal by $25. Thank you to a few people who put in orders to through me or like for from me since I announced it on Monday or it was Sunday or Monday. I had a few people that were even waiting in the wings that said, "Hey, what what do you need? Let me know." And Linda Hodge, she waited till last night at nine o'clock until I told her if I needed anything, and she, I needed seventy five dollars. And she she helped me with the last order. Tammy Steckling came in with an order, and they get free classes with their orders. So. They're happy because they got to sign up for a couple of classes and I got to meet my goal by $25 or $30. And then on top of it, I have a team of demonstrators. There's, or discount shoppers. We're all the, <laughs> we don't judge. It's like if, if you're a discount shopper or a demonstrator, it's the same thing, but you're on my team. You're a happy bee. And we have about 55 people on the team and we had an amazing month. We met the maximum amount of for that as well <laughs> for for um, for sales. And Kathy King, like she sent an order in yesterday on her own account, and it put us over by a hundred dollars for the team sales goal. Well, and I didn't even know I had the goal until Kathy put her order in. I'm like, oh my gosh, we we met it, and I didn't even have it in my head that we were gonna make it. So. You guys are amazing. You're phenomenal. I love all the support. You guys, I love to help you accomplish your crafty creative goals and to help you feel inspired. And you guys, I appreciate your support. And we're just having fun along the way on this stamping journey. So thank you so much. And on to April we are. <laughs> it's like finish up one month and roll right to the next. <laughs> so yes, 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 yes. Linda, you're awesome. I love it. Hi, Tony. So um, a couple notes about upcoming classes. I mentioned about the Dandy Garden for game night. I have two spots available for that. And then also the, the class I'm doing tonight, you guys, I actually have five sets of kits left. I made 60 and 55 are accounted for, leaving five. And um, this is something that if you want to place an order to get these kits, you can. Like Linda, honestly, if you would rather do another set of these fine art floral cards versus the class you just signed up for, I'm good with that too. I have five sets and they're uh, the sets are $20 mailed um, with a cash option, like however, electronic payment. Um, and I'm 
tell my friend. To, okay, I think Danny's talking to <laughs> somebody else. I'm trying to watch that too. Um, and if you would like to place a minimum $40 order, the kits, I just mail them to you for free. So if you guys get done with the class tonight and you're like, oh, I wish I would have gotten a set of these cards, they're available. <laughs> okay, only five. So if you're not in the first five, I will have to tell you no. So, oh yes, 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 Tammy, I hit my goal. You helped me too. So, okay. Um, the other thing too I want to point out is that it's the first of the month. And the live that is the first of the month, I always do the drawings. Um, we're doing the mystery card fan drawing. We're going to do the top fan drawing. I'm going to announce who the winners of the monthly creative challenge. I did a, just a random drawing for them and the, uh, the class card challenge. So I'll announce those winners and I'll announce who the newsletter winner was. So, so we're going to be giving away things. Plus I have four paper pumpkin cards from last week. I didn't just do two. I made that whole kit up right after we were done with the class. I don't think I ever do that, but I got that paper pumpkin done and I am going to give away four of those cards tonight. So I'll announce those winners as well. So there's a lot of stuff I'll be giving away. And you guys, this class is gonna be amazing. I had 11 people for class last night and I had seven for Saturday and they all were so happy with how beautiful the cards turned out. And so I'm really excited for those at home that are doing this with me um, to see once how your cards turn out. So, okay, so the top fan thing, this has come up too in the last month. People have noticed changes that they don't see the top fan anymore. and. I'm not sure if it's just a setting in your computer or not your computer, but Facebook that you need to turn it on. Maybe Facebook just switched people to off. I'm not quite sure, but when I went to my community within Stampin' Up, I have 55 top fans, which something's up because there's normally around 75. There has been for the last few months. So I'm not sure if people need to turn it back on and somehow it got turned off. So. I know, Louie, I'm sad because you have something going on with your Facebook because you are not listed as a top fan and you have always been. So Facebook is not pulling you in anymore and letting me see that you're a top fan and I'm not sure if it's just not tracking it, but it's a setting, I'm thinking. And if anybody knows how to fix it, um, so Jean, yeah, your badge, so I'm just spot checking here really quick. Um, Jean, you're not listed in these top 55 people either. So if anybody knows that's watching right now how Jean or Luann can go, where they need to go in the settings, maybe it's as simple as Googling it and putting, how do I get my top fan badge back in Facebook? And maybe the Google will tell us what to do. <laughs> I call it the Google. Yes, I do. So I think there's a way to turn it back on. Um, so... Uh, Melanie Foy, yep, you're number, you were number 14 in my list. So um, Danny, you know, so I don't know. When I, when I flip my camera down here, you guys will get shots of who's on here. But Danny, I don't see you on here either. So I'm not quite sure, guys, but we got to figure it out. Um, and I don't know. I don't. So the how you become a top fan is by liking, commenting, and sharing. And the more of that you do, so whenever I post anything, when you share it, when you when I post something and you like it, then that's how you get designated as a top fan. So I don't know. I know what Angela Knutson did one time is she went like, 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 and went down everything that she could. And all of a sudden in my notifications, I saw that Angela liked about 20 things. And I'm like, oh, she's working on her top fan badge. <laughs> so yeah. So all right, guys. So I want to show you some cards too because I got some happy mail. I got happy mail from Arliss Knoop. So she sent me an Easter card and she just wrote on a post-it note. Happy Easter. Um, um, Stacy, we're talking about the top fan for people. So um, yeah, you guys can check out who the top fans were here. Uh, so this was a beautiful card from Arliss and she did a diagonal piece of the flowers of every season designer paper and some of the tulips from the, I don't remember, timeless tulips. Some of the polka dot white tool embossed the background here. Her subtle embossing folder is a lot crisper than mine. Mine is all um, like not so good anymore. <laughs> Hi, Charlene. So that was a beautiful card from Arliss. And then I also got a beautiful card from Faye Godby. So <clears throat> I haven't even opened it. It's got a cool belly band on here on the side. This is using the Hydrangea um, DSP and Sweet. This is from the Sweet Sampler, I think. So let's look at this. It opens like... 
that? Very cool. So somebody will be getting this card from from me as we we share the card love by keeping our cards going around in circulation. And <laughs> she wrote on a, a purple sheet. She must know I like purple. <laughs> so, all right. So those were some cards I wanted to share. And did you guys see Kelly's Technique Thursday card that she did paper piercing? Oh my gosh, you guys. So when she sent me this card to say, hey, this is what I'm thinking about doing. I said, are you crazy, girl? She cut out all of those. So she stamped the little boots and cut them out. And it's just a beautiful April card because April showers bring our May flowers, right? So if you haven't watched this how-to, it's in the Cards by Christine Facebook page. I will be sharing it to the VIP group um, as well and to the Stampin' Game Night workshop as well so that you guys can get the video. But she... She did a, a little Technique Thursday on that today. So, okay. Um, so this is what we're going to do a little bit later. Uh, I've got the top fans. I've got names underneath here so you guys couldn't see them. <laughs> so I have some winners to announce, but then look at over here, guys. If, you're, um, if you signed up for the On Tour convention for Stampin' Up!, you are in the process of getting your beautiful catalog, and this arrived in the mail today. I can only show you the cover. So you're gonna just have to take in the beautiful cover for now. <laughs> and um, um, and on May 4th is when I can open up the catalog and show it online to people. But for right now, all I can do is show you guys the cover. So it's a little bit of a tease, I'm sorry. But um, uh, just a note too about uh, the VIP page. I know that there's a bunch of new people that have placed orders with me recently. And once you place an order with me, you become a VIP. And I am try my best to make sure to invite everybody into the VIP group, but I forget sometimes, or it overpasses, depending on what I am in the middle of <laughs> when I see somebody place an order. So if you're new to me and you've placed an order, I need to we need to become friends on Facebook, and then I can invite you to the group. So, Yep, you can, the, the cover, you can hold it. So what I'm gonna do also is I'm gonna take a picture with the catalog and post it on my page and say, hey, who needs a catalog? So that's coming. So Julie got her catalog today, oh boy. So I think I was the one, um, Jean, I was gonna ask you if you needed a catalog. I didn't know if Kelly gives you a catalog, Kelly Atchison, or if you get one from me. I, I can happily and gladly sell you one, or not sell you one, send you one is what I meant to say. Um, I just, I, uh, if demonstrators are already, you know, if people are demonstrators, they'll get their own catalog. And Jean, I know that you're not. And so I will absolutely 110% send you a catalog if that, if you need one. I don't remember if you needed one last time and Kelly sent it. So we can make whatever you want happen. And I, you're a wonderful customer to me. So I will gladly send you one. So, okay. May 4th, early Cinco de Mayo party. Bring on the margaritas, Danny. I love it. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, going back to the catalog. So I, I will get them the end of next week and then I'm going to turn them around as fast as I can. <laughs> so, all right, guys. Um, are you ready to stamp? I know I'm mentally preparing myself for these cards because they are so much fun, but it's one of those things where I designed these cards way back in February and it's a refresher when the gals come and make them live here, but now it's on me. <laughs> so it'll be good. We're going to do a little bit of a roll call though, really quick. You guys, this is amazing. I had mentioned that I made 60 kits and I think that I sent out 33 of them in the mail all over the United States. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everybody who has these, um, Oh, Sandy said on there, if you guys are looking for the top fans, just read the comment that Sandy just posted. And speaking of Sandy, she's number one on the list because she signed up for this class first. <laughs> and Danny Olson, Christy Warren, Leslie McMinn, Mary Carls, Barb Barkow, Lala, Melanie Chandler, Jean Maxwell, woohoo, Ann Miller. Ann Miller was our winner, winner chicken dinner. Uh, when you're in my VIP club once a month, I give away the half off bund a bundle for the sweet bundle class and Anne won the art floral uh, bundle at half off plus she got the kits for free so Anne's stamping for free tonight <laughs> so hi Kathy Carmen Melendez Amy Ponce is it Ponce or Ponce I think it's Ponce Sue Volts Lori Kaiser April Drain Latokia Trick D Ann Estelle Judy Bobo Lynn Beasley Kathy King Ellen Brover Bobby McPherson 
Sue Wagner, you don't know it yet, but you gave me an order, so I sent, I'm sending this one to you, <laughs> this glass. I have to mail it to you yet. Feline Mays, Angela Knutson, Jean Terwilliger, Linda Hodge, Marsha Spatek, Jill McMaster, Kay Warren, Wendy Kruger, Bonnie Gravelin, Francie Freeberg, and Brenda Wood. Holy Moses. And there may be five more too. You might never know you want these kits. So I will be popping them in the mail to you tomorrow if you place an order or if you want to pay for them. Yep. <clears throat> yes. So we're going to flip down here, you guys. Here is, oops, there it is. We're going to flip down here. Here's my email address right here. If you guys ever need anything, email is amazing. <laughs> it works so good. I see it all the time. Um, Chris M. Bertram at MSN.com. If you need a bow maker, if you need a glue holder like this, I have those too. Um, bow makers, I have two people waiting and I have 30 of them coming. So they're coming. I got to go get them. <laughs> the person that has them lives about 30 minutes away. So I got to work on getting over by her. Um, so if you are wanting to be part of my VIP program and you placed an order with me recently, or you're on my team. Yeah, Danny, yes. Danny, you were number two. Danny, you were number two. Ha ha ha. You should have your kits, I think. <laughs> so um, just let me know and I can, um, if you guys need to be added to my VIP group, you just gotta let me know. Um, I try to really hard, make sure I include everybody, but this girl is not um, always 100% <laughs> good. I try. <laughs> all right, so all right. Christy Warren loves her bow maker. Yes, um, Angela just got one too. Not Angela Knutson, but another, Angie Richards just got a bow maker as well. And she loves it. So, all right, guys, this is one we're going to start with first. <laughs> There's not a lot of crazy to this one, but we're going to <laughs> try not to make it any more crazy. So if you're wondering what a kit looks like, hang on. So this is one of my extra kits. So I've got an extra fine art floral. So if you're wondering what you get in a kit, this is how your kit should come. It's got a poppy parade base. I do all your die cutting and embossing for you. So it came with a white piece that's smooth and flat. It came with a white piece that is embossed with the painted textile embossing folder. You'll have two pieces here, some pearls and some ribbon. Just always be careful when you guys open up your kit because there are lots of little bits. Hi, Chris. Lots of little bits and parts in your kit. So um, this is what you would get for free if you place a minimum $40 order or if you pay for it. Um, I'll send those in the mail. We just lost the heat tool. <laughs> I'll send those in the mail as soon as I know that you guys want them. But... Let me just show you real quick. That's the old catalog. Hang on. We got to go, we got to back stuff just a second because when I do a bundle suite class, I always like to share with you what is included when you get the suite. So this one is the Fine Art Floral on page 32 of the mini catalog. You will be happy to know that these stamps and the dies are carrying over, not as a bundle, but they're carrying over to the annual catalog. <clears throat> so in that catalog that I just showed you the cover of, they'll be in there. So this one, when you get the fine art floral, it comes, it has a bundle. It has golden garden acetate, which is one of the <clears throat> cards uses that. The gilded leafing. And I had a disclaimer on that. I did not provide gilded leafing in the kits and you will understand why. <laughs> in a little bit <laughs> when we use it. And I really encouraged if people wanted it to purchase that, you know, and have it sent to that. So um, thanks for everybody telling, um, somebody was looking about how to get a bow maker. So you guys are good. The email is, I'll leave it right there so you guys can see. Um, this fine art ribbon is also part of the suite, the painted texture embossing folder, the heat and stick powder, and the beautiful paper. Okay, so I got to show you the paper though. Hang on. The paper in the catalog is so hard to see. So I have these sheets put together that show the paper. Like this is the front and the back, front and back. I used this one. I used that one. I used that one. And I used that one. So I tried to encompass as much of the designer paper as I could. So, and then on this back side, there's more samples. So this is the suite that we're working with tonight, the Fine Art Floral Suite. 
in the suite, there's also that embossing folder and that looks, oops, that doesn't look like that. When I get so far, <laughs> I'll bring it out to show you guys. <clears throat> so you guys should already have your kit. So do you want to know? I think Jay Shante is watching. I want to give credit to Jay Shante because this is the beautiful swap card that I received from Jay back in January. I really didn't even want to change it at all. I loved it so much. But when you case people's cards, casing is copying and sharing, you should change them a little bit to call them your own. And you have to just change a minimum of three things. And that's what we say <laughs> qualifies as counting as your own. So I changed the color. I changed the orientation. And I used pearls instead. And um, just, yeah, a different piece of paper. <clears throat> but it was so pretty, Jay. I just, Jay is one of the most amazing stampers in the world. And I would have not even changed anything on this, but I had to make it a little bit of my own. Hi, Deb. So this is the card we're gonna make tonight, but I wanted to give credit to Jay for this card. Okay, so what do you have in your kit here? We talked about this just a little bit. We, so when you guys pull out your kits, you should have a piece of Poppy Parade. <laughs> Doesn't it, Jay? January feels like it was last year already, a whole year ago. <laughs> so we have eight and a half by five and a half. I scored all your papers at four and a quarter so that you guys can easily fold them in half and then grab your bone folder and burnish the edge here. Just gives it a nice, crisp, even edge. All right, you guys, I gotta get the hair back out of my face. Okay, cool. So remember that this is... Um, so the gilded leafing, it was on back order for the longest time. And they got some inventory in, and I think that they turned it off of, uh, like you couldn't order at one point. Now you can order it, but <clears throat> Marsha, if you want to get as much done on that one card um, as you can, you could always wait till your gilded leafing arrives, because it will arrive. Okay, so then you have two pieces of white. <clears throat> one is a smooth white. And we're, I'm gonna show you how to stamp this. I didn't stamp it on this piece here, but it's the same concept for this. Now that'll go on the inside. And then your piece of the whisper or basic white with the painted texture. There's no reason why we can't glue that right now. There's nothing that needs to get tucked behind it. <clears throat> no ribbon. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of adhesive. So you guys already have yours embossed at home. You can do that already. <clears throat> put that right on the front. And then these two pieces right here, you can also glue them together. You don't wanna put them on the card front yet though because we have to get our ribbon behind. So when I design cards, it's, imp it's nice to use numbers that measure up good with your designer paper. So this is three by four. It's perfect because you can get three by four, so 12 of these pieces out of one 12 by 12. Now in class, I tell you, some people, they put that pattern on the front of their card, <clears throat> and that looked pretty too. I actually, I think I had one person that turned their card that way, and they made it into a vertical card. You guys always remember, these are your cards, and you can change them and use different stamps. Like, I love when you guys improvise. If you don't necessarily like a stamp set I use, <clears throat> and you use something else that will work with it, that's awesome that's be like that's thinking outside your crafty box <laughs> all right so you're going to adhere these two pieces together hi lisa okay um we're going to just let this sit off to the side in your kit you also have a piece of white baker's twine i i tricked a lot of people because you try to do the whole wrapping it around the card like this and you're like wow that's she's like shorted me of ribbon <laughs> it's called ribbon <laughs> conservation. All you have to do is you're going to fold your ribbon in half. Okay, so that's why it's like that. But I'm waiting to put my ribbon on until I know where I want it. So just hang tight with that. And you also have a little baby bowsy that I made for you, a little double bow. So what we're going to do, though, is we're going to stamp this. And I want to show you what I did. So you guys, if you, um, another glue bottle bites the dust. Good. I know, Danny, when I got rid of my one before this one, it was such a satisfying feeling. Oh, I'll tell you. <clears throat> All right. So this and this, and I need a piece of paper. So hang on, let me go to my printer and grab a piece here. So the ovals here, you guys, these are from the stitched ovals. I'm trying to watch to see if the camera's working. 
Ew, it's really slow. Ugh, I'm hoping it's not freezing, but we'll see here. <clears throat> so this is from the Stitched Ovals. And then this one is from the Layering Ovals. Okay, you guys, we're going to flip the camera back to me because I think that I am still good with my camera one. I told you when we first started, I was a little bit worried about what's going to happen with technology. So <clears throat> I'm thinking my camera two is the one that's causing me problems. So we had to do this one time a couple weeks ago and we are going to just undo my camera. You guys, just focus on me. We're gonna make this, we're gonna get through it. So let's shut that off. I wondered what was gonna happen here. So hopefully you guys will see me come back on in a second because I flipped the camera down <clears throat> we're gonna get we're gonna get back here I promise you I know Deb the, the screen froze I see that so we're gonna we're gonna I knew something was gonna happen with technology today so hang on we're gonna get here so we're gonna flip this back up here and we're gonna cross our fingers hang on see we got this we got this let's see here Okay, I'm doing my check. I notice it right away when my hands go really slow in the video, but I think we got it, guys. <laughs> I don't know, when I went up to get a piece of paper, I must have disrupted the, the wavelengths of the internet. <laughs> but give me some thumbs up. Let me know um, what you guys are seeing. And if, I mean, I'm seeing it working now. So we're gonna keep this party started, okay? Or keep this party rolling, okay? So the stamp set though, I'm afraid to move really fast. Oh my gosh, you guys. Okay, so the stamp set that we're using, let's see where it is. It is, um, got this back on, perfect, you guys are good. Okay, so this is a stamp and so one of the things, so Kelly, Kelly did a trifecta with this. One of them was masking and stamping and using a marker to stamp. And so that's actually what we're gonna be doing here now. <clears throat> so it's so easy, <laughs> let's keep the party rolling. So it's so easy just to take a stamp and stamp it up and just ink. But what happens when your stamp is a part flower that you want one color and leaves that's on the bottom here? So this is how I would recommend doing this. And I know that this is hard to do um, and especially when the, the stamp turns color, it's really hard to see it. So what I did is I, you know, you could mask. Like this might be the best thing to do um, if you're not comfortable or sure of yourself where you're going to get ink. You could grab some washi tape. This is some old stuff from somewhere that it doesn't even like to rip off really good anymore. But you could take and <clears throat> you could mask off because you don't want to get red ink where the green is. So this works, or you could free, I don't freehand it, <laughs> and try to ink around the pad like this to do it. But I'm gonna just show you, this is probably the safest way to do it. <clears throat> and I wanna leave my buds here red. Here, I made my buds green. This bud's for you. Um, <laughs> hi, Tony. Um, you had snow there today, wow. So I wanna have red buds down there. So <clears throat> just to be safe, I'm putting the washi tape. Now the thing with the washi tape is, you gotta remember to take it off, okay? If you forget to take it off, you're gonna get wherever the washi tape is, there, on your card. So we're taking this off. Now be very careful this, it's like a, a murder scene. Last night, everybody had red ink all over their fingers. It looked like somebody got cut. <laughs> so <clears throat> I am now going to grab a marker, my pear pizzazz marker, and I'm going to color where I didn't stamp with the red ink. <clears throat> you got to be very careful because if you get any bit of red in the stamp, you are going to smear it all over. So if you get red in your marker, all you have to do <clears throat> is just draw lines like that. We determined in class that, okay, the other thing too is you go like this. You kind of just huff on it. It's called the huffer move. I don't know, huffer puff. You stamp off. 
That looked super cool the way it was, but I'm gonna do it at second strength here. And it gets a little bit lighter. So that was first strength and that's second strength. Now, <clears throat> the other thing is you gotta have a little bit of room for a sentiment. So the sentiments in this set that says, thank you, there's a happy birthday here. Now you're wondering though, this, how is that gonna fit there? We're gonna do something very similar. They're in the stamp set. There is this little stamp that looks like the inside of a flower. <clears throat> you can use that, hi Dar. You can use that on the inside here just to give it a little bit extra uh, accentuation, uh, uh, ex ex accenting it, <laughs> accentuation. <laughs> so there's that. And now on Saturday when we had class, I think we just had everybody stamp at first string and it looked pretty. And we figured out in class last night that it was in fact, I did it at second strength and then I did the little guy <laughs> at first strength. Now the sentiment. Oh, and then you can see here the greenery didn't show up as good as I wanted it to. If that's the case, you guys can just take your green marker and just draw it really lightly back in. So this set makes you feel a little bit like an artist, so it doesn't have to be perfect. You can just color in a little bit. This is where you guys are gonna feel like the whole Bob Ross come out in you. All I did was take my green marker and drew in a little bit of extra leaf and stem action there. So the other thing that we need to do is we need to, we're gonna stamp happy birthday. My trick with this is I wanna do, so on this one, you can see I did thank you. This one, I did best wishes. And this one, I did the happy birthday. All three of those stamps, the, they're on single lines. <clears throat> and if you guys have different stamps at home where they're stacked like that and they fit better, that's cool. All these sentiments are part of this set. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink up the birthday first. Now, this also, you could use the washi tape if you wanted, but I'm going to go for it. I'm just going to ink up the birthday very slightly. And <clears throat> I want to do birthday first because that needs to fit right down here. And because I did not put any ink on the happy, I did not worry about putting happy there. Now, the biggest thing you have to do, though, now is clean this stamp very good. And you have to give it a second to dry because the photopolymer, when they're wet, they get a little sticky. And they'll actually, I've noticed, <clears throat> if I would go to ink up my happy right now and go to stamp it, it sometimes does something weird to the paper. So I'm going to stamp off a couple times. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the happy. Now, because this is a photopolymer stamp, you guys, this makes it easy. If this was a clear mount, then you would definitely want to pull out your masking tape and mask off the birthday. So I'm going to get the happy situated right above the birthday, just like that. Okay. Now we just did masking and then we did it without masking. So had you not been comfortable with doing what I just did, all you would have to do, we'll just take this washi tape. All you would have done is masked it with your washi tape like that. And then if you end up going over the edge, it's okay because you're gonna hit your washi tape and then you're gonna take your washi tape off and stamp your happy. So that's a little thing. It's always nice to have some old washi tape around in case you wanna do any masking. So <clears throat> red goes all over the place. So I highly recommend closing up your ink pad <laughs> so you don't get red ink all over your place, all over yourself. So that was the happy birthday. Now, for the sentiment, oh, and I'm not done with the red ink. For the sentiment that we used last night in class, I pulled out a set called Friendly Flamingo. If you're not sure about this one and you're on the fence, I am doing a class next month. Oh, it's actually this month, April, that's using Friendly Flamingo, and it's this card right here. And it features this, this set right here. <clears throat> and I didn't use the dies, but what I love about this, there's words here. So it does have its own happy birthday, which is almost the same as that. But I love the sentiment, hoping your day is as amazing as you are. And I have that. I'm trying not to move very fast because I don't want to disrupt my technology here. But I already have it out and on a block. And 
<laughs> Let me see here. Hang on. I got to get the ink pad back open. And we're going to stamp that right about so. Perfect. All right. So now that we have our stamping done, you guys, I forgot to turn off my volume on my phone. So you're going to hear some dingling. Hi, Christine. So I'm going to make Brandon proud. Brandon, if you're watching, thank you so much for the chocolate Easter bunny. That was really sweet that you and Angela dropped it off the other day. <laughs> Brandon really likes it when I clean my stamps. So he says that's what you always need to do is make sure they get clean. So I'm using the Stampin' Chamois. That's in the annual catalog, and you can get yourself a case to hold it. So <laughs> I'm always afraid with red ink because it smears <laughs> if it's not dry. Okay, so we can go ahead and we're going to glue the inside in on this one. And then we can also glue the oval onto the scalloped oval. So do that. <clears throat> when I stamped this one originally, I got my leaf a little bit better with the green marker. So... Okay, now this one can get glued. Thanks for sharing, Christine. All right, then this one, a little bit of glue behind here. And now here's my trick for putting this ribbon down. Where'd the card go? I left it over here. So let's get that so it's out of plastic. <clears throat> so I'm not, I know that this needs to get glued onto here but I don't know exactly where I'm gonna put my ribbon. And I could guess it's gonna go about here. But one of the things that I like to do is I don't like to always guess where I wanna put my ribbon. So what I do is I prep this with dimensionals and I'll only take off the top three. So like the outer, the two outer ones and the top one. And I'm gonna leave this bottom one so that the dimensional backing is still on it. Cause that will give me the ability to <clears throat> lift it up and get my twine behind there. So, hi Jane from where are you? Where, Grantsburg, Wisconsin. Woohoo! How far is that from Fond du Lac? <laughs> I car, I had to sneak my face in there to see. So what I'm doing now is I'm prepping the back with the tear and tape, and I'm gonna peel off the waxy paper. This is where you're gonna want to fold your ribbon in half. And now what I'm gonna do is. I can look at the front of this and figure out where I need to put it and I can sneak it up there and I can eyeball. Okay, I think I want my bow right about there. So I'm gonna, now that I have the tear and tape on the back from the front, I can just flip that one tail over and then I can flip the other tail and it's straight. And hi, Kathy Jackson. Hi, Ethel from South Jersey. Then we can take, and I'm gonna prep the back here. So if you guys, I did a tip Tuesday on this past Tuesday about adhering ribbon. And so I want to pop this up. So what I did is I treated my tear and tape like it was single-sided tape. I'm not gonna take the wax paper off. Ooh, am I gonna salvage that? They bent, <laughs> they folded together. Ooh, I don't know. He's not very sticky, but we're gonna go for it. So because I want this piece to be popped up, I did not peel off the tear and tape waxiness. And I'm not putting one on top of it over there because it won't stick on top of this plasticky paper. So now don't worry, I didn't forget. We still have to take that dimensional backing off of the other one. And I can see I got one more right here. Hi, Linda Bendick. All right, then this guy goes right about here. And then I can go underneath here and grab my one off so I don't forget about him. And now I've got the ribbon exactly where I want it. The bow is going to be adhered with a glue dot. <laughs> I talked about that also on Tuesday for my tip Tuesday. Hi, Shannon. So I always like to use glue dots when I put my bows on. There's usually a front and a back to the bow. Um, it's hard to see it with the baker's twine, but I'm gonna put it right there. And as I'm holding it down, I like to pull my tails so they're kind of hanging down. All right, almost there. Almost there. We got to find the pearls. And I had them right here. So I put three pearls in everybody's kits. And what you could do, if you like to use your nails, go for that. Otherwise, I have something. This is called a take your pick tool. One of the things I noticed is it was really cool 
when the pearl fit right inside one of those four-sided pointy things. <laughs> yeah, if you can get it to do that, that's great. So I found one there and that worked. And then I'm gonna put one in that one and then I'm gonna put one there. So I had two on the bottom of this one and one up there, but for my card, I'm gonna switch it around and put two on the top. And then I press those embellishments down really good so they don't fly off. <laughs> and then Stella. So one thing with Stella is when you Stella on red, it will bleed really bad. It, it just smears all over. So you just have to be very careful. Know that you might lose some of your, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You, did you see that? It just turned it a little orange. So um, I'm going to just be strategic about stamping or I'm um, selling just on where the dark lines are, not necessarily all over. Here's an idea too. You could, if you want to put some Stella on this card, you could do the outside perimeter of that three by four right along the edge here. That will Stella it up. I'm a little bit afraid to Stella my flowers. They're just so pretty the way they are. And I know that the Stella will make them bleed and, and get orangey looking actually. So I'm just gonna Stella the outside. Yeah, the take your pick tool is amazing. So look at that. That one went together very nicely. So um, this is what people had the hardest time with last night was getting the green and the red to look just right. And it takes a little bit of practice. Practice makes perfect. So this will be somebody's card. Um, for when I announce next week, that'll be somebody's winner chicken dinner card. Okay, that one's done. So we're done with this stamp. We're going to need these things here. So I'm going to make myself some room and pull the next one over. Which one do you guys want to do next? <laughs> you know, we're going to save the gilded leafing for last. I promise that's going to be a last one. <laughs> save the best for last. It's not best, but I would say, say the tedious for last. <laughs> so, okay. So this card, oh my gosh, so pretty. I made all of these. Oh, this one I made a congratulations and that one made, I made a happy birthday. So we're going to go for that. And you can see the green on these. Every, th this piece of paper is from the same sheet, but there's just different tones and brush strokes. So some might get a lighter color, some might get the darker. So just know everybody's is gonna look slightly different. And in your kit, you're gonna have these two things because I don't know always what you guys are have at home. <clears throat> and then you also are going to have these two and I'll talk about them in a second. These are the dies and we need Blackberry Bliss, Pretty Peacock. Here's a thank you. Thanks for sharing, Ethel. And then in your kit, you'll also have some of these glitter dots here, the gold glitter dots. Those are retiring. I think that if I had to pick a card that I would pick this one. <laughs> it's my favorite of the four because it's got purple and I love Pretty Peacock a lot. Like Pretty Peacock is probably one of my favorite colors. This girl is sad because it is retiring. And I think the paper might be gone already. So in your kit, let's pull this out. All right, so in your kit here, I don't know how much stamp, I might have done a lot of stamping already um, for my kit. But you have your piece of Pretty Peacock, which is eight and a half by four, and a, um, five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. So all you should have to do is fold it over. Yeah, Susie, the peacock is, yeah, oh, it's just a pretty color. And you mix it with Blackberry Bliss, it's so amazing. In your kit, so you guys will have your base. You'll have a piece of vanilla. The vanilla is four by five and a quarter. You'll have a piece of Pretty Peacock that is four by five and a quarter, and it's embossed with one of my favorite embossing folders. It's the Tasteful Textiles. It is carrying over. The subtle is not, but this one is, so that's exciting. You have two pieces that are the same size. They are, whoa, two or one and a half? Let me look. They're two. <laughs> I was like, I have to remember that. Uh, yeah, Leslie, the pretty, okay, she said the pretty peacock is sold out. I, and I don't have much stockpile of it. I have enough to do my in-color class that I have coming up. Speaking of which, I haven't shown this one very much, but here's pretty peacock again. These are for the in-color retirement class that's coming up on April 30th. I'm doing it live. And then 
it's I think April 28th or um yeah the 28th is a third third uh Wednesday whatever the Wednesday's in person so that's the class I'm I've got the last class of the month okay hi Virginia hi Linda so these are two by five and a quarter this DSP looks like that on the one side so some people you might choose if you like that better otherwise the the pretty peacock ish color looks really nice with it too so you also have in your kit a stitched square. You guys, I use the stitched oval. I use the stitched square. And I'm sad because those are retiring. <clears throat> I did call Stampin' Up! And I begged for them to keep them. So if enough of us do that, that might work. <laughs> okay, so you're going to want to stamp your sentiment in Pretty Peacock. So the thank you comes from this set as well. So that's just thank you right in the corner. And Shannon, if you want this kit, I have five left <laughs> email me <laughs> email me we can make it happen uh, okay then you guys in your kit <clears throat> you have a piece of very vanilla it's this big it is big enough in case you want to stamp your flower and your leaf and then die cut it but in your kit I also did give you I also did give you two pieces that look like this these are photo polymer um thanks leslie um these are photopolymer stamps so you could in essence see over the top of them so if you don't have the dies then i'll show you what the stamps look like here so <clears throat> if you're pretty good at lining things up in this case you could stamp the sentiment right over the top of it so uh, if you don't have these stamps, you could improvise too. You could do a little sponging and decorate them up. And here you could color and be an artist and color your flowers. But I gave you an option of a piece like this and also the die cuts so that um, so that you can choose whatever works best for you. So these are the stamps in this one. And then here's the other stamp. And the next I'm, I'm going to show you guys how to stamp this so that you know for at home what to do. So let me grab back my mat here. We're going to leave this stuff as is. And we're going to try to line it up just the best that I can. <laughs> so, so this one is called two-step stamping. So you have a more solid image and then you have a detailed image. And what you do is you stamp one and then the other. And in this case, it's better to stamp. The price of this kit is... It's $20 mailed. So if you do cash, check, Venmo, Zelle, PayPal, friends and family, it's 20. If you go on my website and pay for it, it charges you a dollar for the convenience fee. So if you guys pay cash, then I take off that dollar because I don't need to keep the dollar if you give me cash. <laughs> but if the credit card company charges me, then I pass that on. So, so I'm stamping off like this to get it at second strength. And I'm going to try to not get my head all up in here, but this is, <laughs> oh, the, it's Chris M. Bertram at MSN.com. C-H-R-I-S-M-B-E-R-T-R-A-M at MSN.com. So there's at second strength. I was off just a little kilter, but it's good. Then you're going to take the Blackberry Bliss and you're going to ink that up. And you're going to put this one on at first strength and just line it up just like that, I guess. <laughs> I'm going for it. It's like shut your eyes and go. All right. So that's that. And then for the leaf, I did that also. This was Blackberry Bliss. Oh, thanks, Ann Bellinger. I appreciate that. Okay. Yep. It's definitely good if you send me an email. Okay. Now the leaf is also, or the leaf and the stem, are also at second strength. So I'll stamp off, and then because it's the photopolymer, you've got a good shot at getting this to line up. Okay, that's good. I can live with it. It's a kind of a watery wash look. It doesn't have to be exactly precise. Now, for those that got the kits for me, though, you also have a piece of vanilla. So if you didn't do good on stamping these, then you could also redo them on that piece of vanilla. But I wanted to show you that it was second strength, first strength, and then second strength. Okay, 
So that's a little scrapper over there because I have one here. So now what we have is a bunch of pieces and we need to assemble them together. So we're gonna go through that and tell you my method for my madness. Now, whenever you have acetate like this that's clear, you can see all of the glue behind it. So you have to be strategic about where you put the glue. So I honestly only put adhesive, so you can see here, this is not glued. This is not glued. I only put adhesive where it was gonna be behind the square. So where's my, right here, tear and tape. And we're just gonna cut off a piece or rip off a piece that's about the length of the square. The name of this kit is called Fine Art Floral. Uh, fine Art Floral. And so when you're looking at your paper, I see I have a really darker spot right here and I really want that to be at the top because if I put it down here, it might get covered up by the ribbon. So be strategic about how you lay your ribbon or um, your paper so that you have the best color. Oh, hang on. I, got, I didn't turn off my volume. <laughs> so there's that. We're just putting a piece of tear and tape right there. And then we're gonna take, oh, so the nice thing about this, if you don't like gold, you can always flip that over and you can get silver on the other side. Now, I'm pretty sure that the, okay, they do. You guys, I gotta show you the trick. I did a tip on this not too long ago. I gotta go get my tape though. Hang on one second. So they put a protective layer behind this acetate. And I did a tip to, oh man, I did a tip Tuesday on this. The easiest way to do it, you saw what I did, I scotch tape. I put that on the back and then it peels, hmm, hang on, you gotta catch it, oh, there it is. You see this? I'm going slow, I don't know if you, did. oh, there, you can see it like that. So you might not even know, but there is a, a, like this plastic -y on the back of this. You wanna get that off because it looks so much crisper and cleaner and just shiny when you take that plastic off of there. Okay, so there's a little trick as well for getting that plastic off. All right, now we've got our tear and tape on here. And try not to get fingerprints all over it. Hi, Joanna. So try not to get fingerprints all over. That would be advised. And what I'm gonna do is line up my top and my bottom, just like that. And it's, again, it's only adhering right here. Then what I'm gonna do is flip that over and we're gonna put a little bit of liquid glue. Now again, if you guys are tear and, um, Stamp and seal or mono adhesive tape runner is however you want to um, adhere it. Now, the other thing is I had a couple people that moved it right along the edge here, and so they didn't see as much peacock. That, that works too. Well, let me into your email, but I want the kit, please. So, um, Tony, my phone number is 920-960-4390. Text me. <laughs> Send me a text. That works too. So I'm going to adhere this, making sure that my top is flush right here. And I know that on your kits, all of your kits, I made sure to cut them. Oh, thanks, Danny, for putting the item number. You might have to trim your bottoms, okay? So if you have to trim your bottoms because there's overflap, that's okay. Just take your scissors now and you're going to trim that off, okay? Okay, just like that. Mine was pretty much spot on, but I know for these kits, hi, Karen. Karen, your card went in the mail today, I promise. So you should have it in the next few days. Congratulations on winning the card last week. So your kits were all a hair over because I didn't want them a hair under. So now that you have that glued on, grab your tear and tape. Hi, Bonnie Brown. And we're gonna attach our ribbon to the back. And so flip it over and put those pieces on the top and the bottom. So this is going to make our, I call it the tear and tape sandwich. So you're putting it down first. And then what you're gonna do is check your ribbon so it's straight in the front and then just flip one tail and then flip the other tail. So now you have your tails secure behind. And then you're gonna grab a couple pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, don't we all wish we could trim our bottoms? <laughs> My bottom got a little bit bigger this last year. <laughs> I don't like to think it did, but I think it did when I try on certain pants. I'm like, oh man. 
<laughs> oh, I wish it would be that easy to trim our bottom, but anyways, yes, adhere that now to your card front, and that will get placed on here, just like this. Are you guys curious where I cased this card from? I have a card here, so this is, I gotta show you, I have it sitting right here. I don't remember where I got this from. It was a swap card from like three years ago. And this is the card that I looked at. And then I got this one. <laughs> it's similar but different. But just so you guys see how it's, that's why I swap cards so that I get ideas and then I can use other products with them to make them different. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is take my rectangle, my stitched rectangle, and I'm gonna put a few dimensionals or four dimensionals on the back and then pop those guys off. I found in class a lot of people were trying to adhere the flower onto the square. I didn't do that. I'm doing good on my daily push-ups, Jean. You would be happy to know that I did 15 of them at 5.15 tonight, <laughs> right before class. I did 20 yesterday because I forgot to do them the day before, so I made up for it. I try to do 10. I think I missed four days in February, and I think that I missed maybe four days in March. So I did okay, that was good. <laughs> so we've got our square on, and now we have our flower. So how I did my flower is I glued my stem flat, and I put dimensionals, and I glued it flat in the middle, and I put dimensionals around it. It just, I know on the video, you really aren't gonna be able to see that very well, but when you guys do it that way at home, you're gonna like, wow, that's really cool to have that kind of different dimension. So I'm putting a double stack at the top here, right where that that one is. That one needs two. <laughs> just, just trust me, it does. So we need a double stuffer there. Okay, so pick off all your backs and good, thank you for the hand clapping. All right, then Tyler keeps me on it too. <laughs> He's, he asked me the other, the, like, I think this morning, did you do your push-ups last night? And I'm like, I did. So I'm going to put glue right where the stem is. Very little bit, guys. You don't need a lot here because you don't want it oozing out. Mm, there it is. Okay. And so what is happening is the stem is going to go flat. And I made it look like it was coming out of the bottom. I didn't have it floating in outer space. I like things to be grounded or that they are attached. So I attached this right on the bottom corner and the stem is flat and now my leaves are popped up and that's going to go right about here. So I did a double stack here. Hi Gwen! And now what I'm going to do is put a little bit of liquid glue right in the middle. So it just creates a little bit of depth. It's super cool. I'm actually going to put a little bit of glue right at the tip of that stem just so that goes flat as well. So you're just gonna find the right spot for this. And remember that double stuffer is up there? And I think that's gonna be great. So this is also helping to hold down. So the ribbon helped to hold this down. And because this acetate is so kind of stiff, it's not gonna get all over the place. If you don't like that it's loose like this, maybe take a little glue dot. And you can put a little glue dot right in the corners if you really want to, but I don't think it needs it. In your kits, then you also have the bedazzles. So the, these are the gold glitter enamel dots. They are retiring. Uh, I don't think they're on sale though, so they're eight or seven dollars. There's five of them in your kit. So I tried to give you guys, oh, that one's, oh, okay. This is exactly what happens, you guys. You have to be super careful with these. You can see on my finger that there's just a clear glittery epoxy thing, circle, and then the gold stuck here. You have to be super careful with these because that is what will happen if you're not careful. So you have to dig from underneath to get these to come out. Otherwise, that clear circly thing will pop off. So when you're taking them off of the sheet, I recommend getting underneath it and then kind of popping it off. So we've got one here and then there's a little guy. Just know that if it pops off, find it if you can, and you can take a little bit of glue and you can glue it on it. It might look a little less uh, clear. It might look a little more cloudy, but 
these were finicky. I'll be honest with you. They, they like to pop apart, but there's the, the gold little guys in the middle. And then I had five of them in your kit for you. So just be careful taking them off of the sheet. Get in there so that they don't do what happened right there, which it's flat. They're, it's like the clear thing <laughs> fell off. So you just gotta be careful with these things. They're very, very pretty, but they just don't like to stick so well to the, the base to the top. So let's see, I can get rid of that. That's garbage. Okay, so uh, we just have to glue our inside in here. Oh, Margaret sent me some stars. Holy Moses. I don't know if I've gotten, I got maybe stars one other time. I don't know what to do with these stars when I get them, but I appreciate them. <laughs> All right. So we're going to flip this guy in here. And you, so I did the same thing for stamping here. It was second strength for the blackberry, first strength for the detail, and then second strength for the leaves. Now you guys know why this was probably my favorite card. I just, I love the peacock with the blackberry. It just makes me happy. <laughs> so we have two cards done. Woohoo. All right, so that can go back here. So we got that one can go over here. Now, hmm, what are we going to do next? Oh, we're going to make Brandon happy. We're going to clean. We're going to clean this because we're going to go on to the blue card next. And we'll make sure that these, maybe I cleaned these already. I don't even know. All right, yeah, Susan, I, I, I was uncertain about what I was gonna do with these cards until I sat down and I started creating and I was like, wow, this is definitely a fun set. Okay, so that guy's done. Move him out of the way. Now, this set right here is called Sweet Sampler. It's in the back of the catalog. Now, I never understood. I'm like, what is this sweet sampler all about? It's a host set, so you get it free when you host a workshop. And it's at the very end of this catalog. And I didn't understand what it meant that it was a sweet sampler. So it's back here. It goes for $12.50. When you host a $150 workshop, you can get it as part of your host items. You get $15 of host rewards. And so you could get that for it. But what this is all about is there's a dragonfly that goes with the dandy garden, the da dandy garden, dragonfly garden. There's a hydrangea, which was from Faye's card from earlier that I showed you guys. This is Faye's card right here. That's where that guy came from. Then this goes with the art floral and the shell goes with the she shell. So it is a sampling of stamps that go along and coordinate with the sweets. So I used that in this one. And so this is what this card looks like. It says, just want to say, thank you. I'm thinking of you, happy birthday. So there was lots of different choices for this one. Let's get these guys out of here. So with this one in your kits, you guys got, I didn't know what you were gonna stamp for your sentiment. So what I did is I gave you a short piece and a long piece in your kit. Because I don't ever know, and I don't want to assume you guys have stuff. So I, I'd rather be safe than sorry. So this die, so these dies are part of the fine art floral. So it's a long one. I know you guys have already seen that. There's a long one and a short one. <clears throat> the ribbon that I used for this are, is from the whale set from the annual catalog. It's the pool party sheer ribbon. You've got something like this in your kit. I call this the sacrificial lamb. In your kit, you're also going to have some round opals. So there's three of them that will be in your kit. And this is the die that I used to cut out, I just want to say. I just want to say, <laughs> be very careful opening up your envelopes because there is this little J topper and you might not know that it's for the card and you might think it's garbage or it might just fly out. So make sure you find that little piece right there. If you lose it, you can cut yourself a piece of it from this bottom navy piece if you need to. But I'm hoping that you guys all find your little J toppers is what I'm calling that. Okay, so the other thing I wanna point out is in class, when I had this in person, um, there, you guys, everybody brings their own adhesives to class. 
and there is an adhesive in the catalog called foam adhesive sheets and they are I don't know five by five if they are even that four and a quarter by four and a quarter and they are a sheet of dimensionals that is just one piece solid and you guys I didn't put I this is how much come on a sheet I wouldn't have been able to send out 35 of these or 34 of these I wouldn't have <laughs> this is my only pack that I have but I wanted to show you what happens if you do use this so people in class brought their own if you don't bring your own this is flat and you probably don't see it so much but it's flat you can see it's glued right on there so that's what you guys are going to end up doing for this I do not recommend cutting teeny tiny pieces of dimensionals to put behind your words that is not going to make you happy <laughs> It looks fine without the dot too. You could see that. Now this one, what I did to prep this one, you can see that that just want to say it's popped up. There's that foam sheet back there. So how you use this is you got, if you guys are at home, just know that this die, what I did, I'm going to grab a kit here. I'm gonna pretend that this was my navy piece right here. So let's pretend this was my navy piece. What I would do is I would hold it up to this and I would cut out my foam piece. Then you would peel off the waxy paper and attach it to here. Then you take this and you run it right through your machine, your, your big boss, your stamp and cut and emboss machine. And what I did is I rolled it through once this way for this card, then I picked it up and I rolled it around this way. So it just gives it different ways to cut the to cut the paper. And that's how then all those words popped out with dimensionals on them. So that's what these foam sheets are. They're available in the adhesive section of the Stampin' Up! catalog. And it's just an easy way for you to pop up really little particles, really thin things that you don't want to sit there with your scissors and try to cut. So, all right, so let's go ahead and let's make this card and see what we can accomplish here. Okay, let me get rid of these inks over here. I don't need them. Let me see, Judy just said I didn't, oh, I got voice. Judy, I'm not sure. Um, you said you lost my voice, but I just checked my phone and, and it was, there was volume. So in your kits, <laughs> I uh, have a piece of pool party. So this is pool party with navy is what we have going on here. The pool party base is like all the rest. It's eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. So just fold that one over. Make sure your corners are lining up. Hi, Lila. Take your bone folder, burnish the edge. Let's get you over there. Okay, so it's a vertical card. So we can set that there. In your kit, you also have a piece of white, four by five and a quarter. You have a piece of pool party, four by five and a quarter. And yes, <laughs> Danny, it would be definitely unpleasant, fussy cutting of gooey material, not fun. <laughs> the DSP, everybody's is gonna look a little different. So this pattern had a less flower at the top. This one had more flower at the top. You can see that every, this is a sheet where it's a whole page of pretty pattern flower. And so everybody's is gonna look slightly different depending on what piece of the 12 by 12 you got. So don't go crazy putting this together quite yet because there is a little stamping we need to do. And I wanna make sure I tell you guys about how to put this together because I tricked a lot of people with this last night. And then I didn't put your stuff in a bag, but I put mine in a bag, but you should have all your letters and then a little, like I did thank you, but you guys have two sizes so that you can stamp yours. So there's a little bit of stamping on here and it's really hard to see it, but it's down here. You can see there's a little bit of darkness in certain spots here. There's a stamp in here that looks like that. It looks like foliage. And what I did is just to give a little bit of texture and to use the stamp. When I do a sweet and a bundle class, I like to try to use as many stamps as I can to showcase them all. So this is Versamark. Versamark is primarily what you use for embossing, heat embossing. And it also can be used 
for when you want to do tone on tone stamping. So when you stamp it on the cardstock, it makes it look like you stamped it with pool party at like maybe third strength. And so it just, Versamark can be used for stamping all by itself to give you a nice little background. And so this flowery thing is gonna be in the background and I'm going every which way. Did you see I kind of went this way, then that way, then this way, then that way. And then I'm gonna do one more at the top. Hi Barb, hi Mary Bowman. So you can see here, now that I don't have anything really next to it, you can see I just did all the different flowers because I don't need to do this side because I'm gonna be putting paper there. Hi Latokia. So that's all I did with the Versamark. So we'll set that there. And I think that it's gonna be a thank you card. Oh, we gotta do one more thing for stamping. So with the inside, so we're done with that. This is the one from the Sweet Sampler that matches this set. So I'm gonna use navy. Are the overlays in the new catalog? Shannon, I don't know off the top of my head, I don't know what you're meaning by overlays. Like what, what is an over, like help me understand what you're asking with the overlay, overlay. And maybe somebody else gets it. Um, I'm not sure what the overlay is. So I'm gonna stamp this guy along the side here on the right. So isn't that pretty? Just coming out the bottom of the page like that. Okay, stamp off a couple times, and then I think we're done. You're a little late, Latokia. We're on the third card, but we just got started, so you have time to, to work on stuff with us a little bit, and then you can always catch the replay for the rest. Okay, so grab this out. So I, I try to stamp off a bunch of ink as much as I can before I go into my chamois, otherwise it gets ink all over. Oh, for stenciling, are the overlays in the new, okay, so, um, Shannon, if you're asking about stencils, we did last week, Tuesday, I did a tip Tuesday using the current stencils that are in the annual catalog. Those are carrying over. And they also have another set of four that are carrying over. They aren't the same ones though as that were in the paper pumpkin kit. So if that's what you're asking about, there's going to be two packs of four different designs. So the acetate, maybe. Okay, the acetate is not carrying over to the annual catalog. Uh, I don't think it is. The Golden Gate acetate. Oh, mercury acetate is carrying over to the annual catalog. So you will be able to get the mercury acetate, which is the purple and the pink one. All right, let's glue our inside in and get rid of that. Oh, haha, ha, you guys, I had stamped it already. Which side do I like better? I like that one better, so <laughs> well, actually I like the darker one better. One's a little lighter and one's a little darker. So horse a piece. So there's this. Um, you know, Melanie, I can't remember. I'd have to look in the book, but I don't remember if the Golden Gate is in there. It might be. I have to look. I, I remember a lot, but oh, okay, yes. So the, the you're asking about... This card right here, you're asking about this, if this is in the catalog. You know, if you can email me or send me a text message and ask me, I can look it up and then I can tell you when I get done with class. I can look that up for you. Uh, just text me. All right, so next we're gonna glue this guy down. So grab a little bit of liquid glue. You guys remember one of my things that I always do, I always cut my DSP or my layers on the top slightly bigger instead of slightly shorter because it's easier to cut it off than it is than to have it too short it doesn't look as good when it's short so on mine i think i got it right on but in case you guys need to trim off here go ahead and trim that then you are wondering about your sacrificial lamb so in your kit you have this three eighths by five and a quarter piece of paper <laughs> i don't know why i have an extra white piece here <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, so this is called a sacrificial lamb because it serves no purpose really except for to help your ribbon look better. So if I would have just put the ribbon like this, you would it would just not look so hot. You don't hardly see it or you, you hardly see it. <laughs> and if you move it over a little, it just looks weird because it has a line through it. So the whole purpose that I do with sheer ribbon is I 
use some, I call it the sacrificial lamb, because what it just does is helps the thing on top of it look better. So we're gonna put a little bit of adhesive behind here. Now when you put this down, you can go over the DSP, you could go more this way, however you want. I'm gonna put mine slightly over the DSP and it'll look like that. Okay, now you're gonna make yourself another tear and tape sandwich. So now by doing that, this is how pretty this is gonna look on here. See that? It just, it just makes it just more sheer and pretty all by itself. Okay, so grab your tear and tape and we're gonna get two pieces for now. Make sure you find the right side. You're gonna pick off your waxy paper. Go into Facebook settings and privacy and then settings again, then public posts, scroll down to the comment ranking and make sure that it's on. There you go, Danny, good job. That's gotta be it. So if you guys have lost your top ranking fan, take a screenshot of what Danny just wrote so you know where to go, how to fix it to become a top fan again. There's a setting in um, public post that needs to be turned on. Okay, so I'm grabbing two more pieces of tear and tape to make our sandwich here. Now you guys might think, well, that's a little excessive with the tape, but I'll be honest with you. I've been doing this for 20 years and if I had a card or two that came apart because I didn't put enough adhesive on, it made me think I wish I would have put more adhesive to begin with. So I don't want these, you know, when you make handmade cards, people don't throw them away as fast as they throw away the store-bought ones. They don't. I know they don't. And you don't, if they hang on to it for 15 years, you don't want that ribbon coming apart. <laughs> so this is going to go on our card front now, just like this. Oh, make sure you have your flowers going the right way. Not that you glue. So I think I had one person in class that glued their flowers upside down. And what they did is they just turned it so that the DSP was on the other side then. So no problem on that. So here's our base like that. Now this right here, you guys are going to say, wow, these two pieces are the same size. How do you get the border like that? Well, this is two and three quarter by three. So it's almost the same size. But what happens here is you know, hold them so they're vertical, and then the white piece turns like this, and now you have your pool party margin all the way around, and what's gonna happen is your knight of navy is gonna slip in right behind just like that. So when I originally designed this card, the pool party looked nice against this dark blue, but then when I got over here, it looked washed out. So it needed just a little bit of color on that side right here to make it pop a little bit. My mom said that today she will have to rotate all the cards for me that she displays. I love it. <laughs> okay, so let's glue this together. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of glue, and I usually don't do it this way, but I'm actually going to go right down the middle of that, like so. Hi, Donna from Louisiana, and thanks for sharing. Barb's in the house. Woohoo! All right, so that's going to get glued down one eighth inch all the way around. And then what we're gonna do is put a little bit of glue right in the middle here. And we're gonna sneak that in there before our glue is dry. And get that, oh, I gotta work a little bit faster. Get that guy right in here. So if you use um, like a tape runner, it might not work so good, but I had liquid glue, so I could pick that up really quick and put that in there. So I've got a little overhang on the top and there. Okay, now that piece, gets popped up with dimensionals. If you had preferred to put your words on first, you could have done that. Thanks for sharing, Deb. I like to do the words last. <laughs> so I'm gonna prep this with the dimensionals. And then we're gonna go ahead and put our words on. You guys will have to figure out what you want to say. <laughs> um, it, this reminds me of a song we were singing in class last night. I just want to say that I love you. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart. So my friend Mandy and I would sing that to each other. We'd call and leave messages and just sing that so horribly bad that it was funny. So what I'm doing is lining up my Knight of Navy here with my edge of my ribbon. So it kind of continues the look. <laughs> and then we've got that prepped. And now we're on to the birds, the word here. So 
Make sure you don't lose your little J topper. And I highly, oh, just like, like I might have just done. <laughs> oh, there it is. So what I would recommend before you glue your letters and words down is to Stella them. It will be easier to Stella them on this piece of paper than it will be to do them once it's on the card. So you're gonna have to pick out all your bits and parts from the inside. I don't do your picking for you. <laughs> I figure there's something you can do <laughs> while you're listening to me jibber jabber. So I'm gonna Stella that, and then we're gonna Stella the just, just for men. And then want, I want it all, like the song, and say you, say it ain't so. I'm just was doing lyric lines there for you guys. Okay. Hi, Barb from Missouri. Um, okay. Because, oh, we forgot the little J-topper. Hang on. He was hiding in front of my face, like normally happens. So, this is what you guys are going to do. I would highly recommend to not start gluing anything. What I would recommend is laying your words out so that you know exactly where they're gonna go and you can now then glue them one by one after you have them. I would kind of get a visualization of what you want here. Hi, Kathy from the Upper Peninsula. And that guy's gonna go there now. There's two things that are going on. Some of you are gonna use the shorty, and some of you are gonna use the longy. Just know that the long one, I did cut off a hair on this side where the happy birthday is over here. I cut off some. Um, <laughs> I, yep, karaoke would be fun. I definitely, like, you give me enough of alcohol, I will, I will go crazy with the karaoke. <laughs> I won't sound very good, but it'll be fun. <laughs> So you can see that your tags like this are a little bit longer. So if you have a long sentiment, it is very highly recommended to figure out where your letters are gonna go because you might end up gluing this like that and then you're like, oh shoot, I'm gonna have to put this down here. So I would recommend figuring out which one you're gonna stamp and Oh, Doris Fryman's watching and she said the Golden Garden Designer Paper Acetate is on the last chance list. So Shannon, no, it's not carrying over. I do do recall that the Mercury Acetate that is with the Hydrangea set is carrying over. Hi, Sharon. Okay, so that's gonna go here like that. Okay, now we can assemble. So those are my little tips. Get this guy laid out how you want it. Now, <laughs> tweezers work amazing. If you're a fan of holding things with tweezers, that helps. I definitely recommend that. I am, I'm gonna do my best just to get a little bit of glue everywhere here and not too much guys because you don't want it smearing all over the place. So this is where you gotta be a little bit careful with the assembly because once you put it down, you don't wanna be moving it all over the place. So now we're gonna do the want. <laughs> See, honey, I was thinking about karaoke. I did, so I my, my best friend invites me to her family's summer getaways. And I try to make it for a day. I've been doing this for many years. And her dad is the DJ. <laughs> and she was the DJ's girl. <laughs> and so at the summer getaways, they always have karaoke and you have to sing. You cannot get away from it. And so I have done karaoke at that gathering probably for, since Tessa got married. I don't remember what year, Tessa's been married five years probably now. So, or even longer maybe. But yes, I do get my share of karaoke every year. <laughs> you know, when your dad is the DJ, you always have like the most fun, right? <laughs> you have the best parties. So just here, Getting a little bit of glue all over. Thanks for sharing, Sue. So get your say on here. I just want to say, with the glue, you've got a little bit of wiggle room. You can see I moved my two slightly. Now for this guy, I'm gonna put a little line of liquid glue on here as well. If I used the other longer one, I actually did double adhesive. So that's gonna go here, just like that. And for the happy birthday, what I did is I put liquid glue along the top and I think I 
have it partly hanging off and I put a dimensional on the side over here so that this wouldn't get bent down. Okay, so, so far so good. I do have opal rounds to put on next. So we've already did our Stella. So Stella was off of her date already and we're gonna put a couple of these guys on. I've got one over there and two over on the side here. Now, my mom said she didn't like this one over here because you can't see it. And I'll tell you, you can't see it. It's there though, I promise it's there. So if you don't like where I put mine, you can put yours wherever you want to. <laughs> but I liked it over there and I actually like, well, we're gonna leave it. <laughs> All right, oh, you guys, I almost lost my little dude here. Hang on, this one's gonna be the hardest one. <laughs> Yes, Shannon, you must, you got the tweezers. I have tweezers over in my toolkit, but I don't have tweezers in my little jar here. So I just gotta be good with the fingernails. All right, I almost lost that little J, you guys. Almost lost it. So how does that look? We got our third card made. Now these opal rounds, they are carrying over to the new annual catalog. So you will be very happy if you're a fan of them. Um, I absolutely love them. The black matte dots are also carrying over. Okay, so there's our card number three. I just want to say, and you can put anything you want. Now, I left it thank you, so somebody gets this next week for their winnings. Okay, moving on. Hi, Marita. All right, moving on to card number four. Let's bring it in and see what we have. Give you guys a look-see at that while I put this one over here. Okay, drum roll for the last card. And while we do this card, I have to finish my mystery card. I have one thing to stamp on it yet. So I have a piece here so I don't forget to do that. Okay, this is where we're getting the thick of it. All right, so this one, I have three different samples. Oh, that one says best wishes. This one says thank you. And the other one says best wishes too, but this would be a really pretty birthday card as well. So. I think we're gonna do thank you though. So let's bring this here. This has hair pizzazz. We're not gonna do birthday, we're gonna do thank you. Okay, so let's get those out of the way. This one, you guys, in your kit, I gave you two pieces of vanilla that look like this. I gave you two so that you have four chances to get it right, because look, there's two sides to this paper. So. It's made with the classic label punch, sad face. It is being retired. I don't know if there's stock yet or not, but that's where you guys got that from. It's the classic label punch. The ribbon is from the art floral, so that's from the suite. We need this one, this, this. We use Mary Merlot and Rococo Rose. Oh, I have another card that I can show you guys about casing here. Let's move this. So that last, second to last card, I showed you a card I cased. I think I merged two cards together. So I used this card and I more, it was more like this card. So this is a card I made for a class about, it was a hummingbird set, I think. So that's the card I cased for this card. It was more this one than that one. So I had it sitting here and I think you guys like to see that. If you don't ever wanna see my things that I cased, let me know, but I, I it's always fun to see where you get inspiration from. This card, I wanna show you that too. I made this card right here, and this is the card I looked at to get the idea. Oh my gosh, in my swap cards, Mary Merlot is carrying over, it is a neutral. So I saw this card, and I was like, wow, okay, I love Mary Merlot with the Rococo Rose, and it was very similar. So. I don't know, this is a set from two years ago and it retired and so that's a swap card and I hung on to it just because I loved how simple the layout was. And I don't know who made it, the, like whoever made it, it, they did a fabulous job. <laughs> and I kept their card because I thought, wow, that's fun. So what do we have here? We have, I wanna show you here. So we're using some gilded leafing. Now, the first one I did, it looked like this. This was my prototype and I thought, wow, is that bulky? So the saying is you gotta get some gold to get that girl. I mean, maybe she likes that much gold, but I thought that was a little much and I thought it looked prettier and daintier with it half as much gold. 
And I learned how to use the heat and stick powder. You can see how goldy it is in the middle here. I liked it a little bit less goldy. So some of you, if you don't have this gilded leafing or it hasn't arrived yet, you might want to wait and get, you know, you could stamp and have it ready to go for when your gilded leafing arrives, but I'm going to show you how to use it. So that's just a sample so you can see. Um, so we have Rococo Rose, Mary Merlot, thank you. We also need the Versamark pad, which is back here. So we'll need that with this guy. And let's get my kit. Let's see what we have here. <laughs> This one, I think a lot of people, not a lot, but enough, they're intimidated. A lot of people had the Gilded Leafing and had never used it. It is being carried over to the annual catalog, so that's kind of cool. So Mary Merlot is a neutral color. So in the neutrals, you have three of my favorite colors. Mary Merlot, Knight of Navy, and Mossy Meadow. None of those are purple, I'll tell you, but the Blackberry Bliss fits right in there with it. So this is a vertical card. In your kit, you're gonna have a piece of very vanilla that is four by five and a quarter. And you're gonna have this piece here, which I don't remember the size, three by four and a quarter. So these are what you're gonna to need to do some stamping on. You have a piece of ribbon trim that was maybe about three inches or three and a half. So that's the art floral ribbon. And here's the, I have my thank you stamped, but I wanna show you how I made it. So. You guys have yours a little bit longer because the punch punches it longer. You can make it shorter by just trimming it a little bit if you want. So that is a little trick you can do to shorten it. Then you have a piece of Rococo Rose that is retiring. It's embossed with that painted texture folder. And then you have a piece of the designer paper, which is probably two by five and a quarter as well. So let's just get rid of these right away. <laughs> this, if you guys remember, I did a chicken card last month. And it had, it looked like giraffe paper. And so it was the back side of this painted texture designer paper. So this will go, yeah, I don't know if there's a top and a bottom to the flowers. You might want to look at it because you might see a pattern that they look like the buds are going up. This bud's for you. And then this guy goes over here. And I've got about an eighth of an inch on the right and then centered top to bottom like that. Okay, so that's just glued flat on here like that. It's ready to go. We're going to do some stamp bing and get stamp happy. So we're going to start with Rococo Rose. And this is the one that you're going to feel like an artiste. Okay, we need the scratch paper underneath here. So the main thing when you do this is you want to leave... A little bit of room up here so that you have vanilla and then you have your gold. I had a couple people that wanted to start with stamping the stem first and when you stamp the stem first you might go up too high for the flower. So I worked from the top and I went down and I just it's about a, my finger with so the Rococo Rose. Hi Alice from Indiana. So the Rococo Rose is at first string and we're gonna put that, so my inside looks like that. So this was, and I don't ever try to get the whole flower on. I want it more tucked into the corner here. So that's why I stamp a little bit off the edge. I'm okay with that. It takes up less space of your card. Now, while I have the Rococo Rose open, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp this one. And remember I said to stamp down just about a finger width, maybe three eighths of an inch. Give it a good push so that you get nice, even ink all over the place. Okay, so that's the Rococo. Then we have Mary. Oh, you guys, I <laughs> we have to do my, this is a side thing. I was a slacker this week, <laughs> and I didn't stamp the inside of my mystery card. And I, <laughs> I think I clued you guys into it a lot that I used this fine art floral to make my mystery card. So I <laughs> can't be a slacker anymore. I got to do my inside for you. Okay. So grab the Mary Merlot and now we're going to do the detailed part. And that just nestles in here. I mean, it's not perfect. Just get it. So it's over the top of it. Just like that. Now that's first strength. 
So in class, if you, I told people that might be too dark for people. So you can stamp off and see what it looks like at second strength. And it looks pretty cool too. Just like that. So I actually prefer the lighter one. It's just like the second strength. So I think it looks a little softer. Do they update it? Oh, so T Danny just wrote that the top fans are updated weekly. So it's possible to lose your badge and then your top fan status if you're not in there every week. So now where does this go? Just like that. Okay, so you guys, this is my, um, I'm gonna get one more little piece over there. Okay, this is for my mystery card that I'm gonna share with you guys in a, <laughs> as soon as we're done here. Okay, but I know that I will be happier with this so you guys just flip it over and I hadn't cleaned the stamp yet so let's just go ahead oh that's where our label is going to go down there and our ribbon so we'll just flip that down there and then stamp that and then the Mary Merlot remember we liked it or I liked it I'm assuming you guys did too <laughs> it's like you got a frog in your pocket when you say we um that's I'm going to do second strength right there. Perfect. I'm happy with that. I bet you guys are too. Yeah. Tony said she liked the lighter one too. Yeah. So you guys, when you're stamping and you don't know what it's going to look like, that's where it's really good to practice on a piece of paper. So you get a feel for what color it's going to come through. Now, the same thing might happen with pear pizzazz. So I know that 20 people have used this ink pad and I haven't rehydrated it, but the green is still pretty dark. So I'm actually going to do a second strength and see what it looks like. Now I like the second strength as well on that. So I'm going to leave that with second strength. I know the dark one would have just been super dark. So we're going to do a leaf down here. Okay. Now, I think that's it for greenery. I can move this stuff off to the side. Okay. This is going to be a thank you card. So, I'm going to show you guys how, if you're stamping at home, let's grab the Blackberry really quick. So, just so you guys see how you can stamp and trim this a little bit. So, the thank you is photopolymer, so it's easy to see. And so, I'm going to stamp it closer to one side on the left. And then what you can do, yes, you're right, it, it complements the flower colors. So, you could always just take your scissors then and trim this so it's a little shorter. It might look slightly different, but nobody's ever gonna notice that. The other way that you can do it is if you have this punch at home, once you stamp it, you can always take the label, put it in here, feed it through to where you want it, and then that punches off the excess as well. So there's a different, there's a couple different ways that you can shorten this label if your sentiment's a little shorter. So I think that that's my good one. Well, they're all good, but that's the one I'm gonna use. So let's move that. All right, assembly time. So let's get this out. We're not assembling everything. <laughs> we got to do our inside, our gold part yet, but we're going to definitely glue. <laughs> we're saving the crazy part for last. So put a little bit of glue on here, and we're going to glue it in this one like that. Doesn't that look pretty? Oh, my gosh. I love the Mary Merlot with the Rococo Rose. So... That's going to set off. We're going to move this off to the side. We're going to save our thank you, you guys. We're going to do... Oh, man, we're ready for it. <laughs> the gilded leafing. Okay. <laughs> Two things with the gilded... There's three ways you can use gilded leafing. So let me get the gilded leafing. So I literally opened this up in class last night after the end of class. We had finally gotten to the end. So this whole jar... So this is gilded leafing. There's a little sign on here that says it's bad for the fish. So don't rinse any of this down the drain. Um, if you're going to wash your hands, they say to use wet wipes and put them in the garbage, but don't rinse down the drain. So this whole jar fit in here. So all that I have in here right now is a brand new jar. We had gotten mine all the way down to the bottom. Find a nice, happy home for this because it's not going to work if you're using it uh, in this jar. This jar, I poured it in here and it completely exploded into what you see here. You have to be very careful when you open this up. Don't breathe too hard because 
it's very staticky. And if you blow on it, it just goes poof, like that. So I generally keep this covered and I even wrote on there, do not open, but there are these big flakes of gold. And the more you use it, the, the more they get broken down. Okay, so we're gonna hang tight on this, but I wanted to show you that's what this looks like. So I've found, there's more, I'm sure, than just this three, but there's three ways that I've been using the gilded leafing. So one of them, where do, I'm gonna shut this so it doesn't fall over. So one of them is how we're gonna do here with the heat and stick powder. One is with tear and tape. And then another one is you can use, how deep is that container? Good question. It is two inches by, I'm guessing, six, seven, eight. Two by, it's two high and it's eight by six or so. Now, this is a snapware container, not that um, that makes a difference, but I'm pretty sure it was a snapware container that I got a set of them from the home, home store. Like there was eight different sizes and that one I didn't use. <laughs> I don't use many. <laughs> so, um, so the tear and tape is one way, but then the liquid glue is another. And how you do the liquid glue is what I did originally. You bet. I put, so you take your liquid glue and you put a line and you put, and you know what we're going to do? We're going to practice it and we're going to show you. So we're going to take this flower here and you have to put little lines of liquid glue. And we're going to take and do the petal, like the, the lines here of the flower. So you can't put liquid glue that's wet into there. It will be a not a good thing. It will be like a mess. So I'm doing this now. And we're going to set this off to the side. If I forget to come back to this, guys, somebody's got to call me out on it. And I just figured out that my video did the exact same thing as it did an hour ago. So I caught it right away. And we're going to try to do the same thing that I just did because the first camera is working perfectly fine. You guys get to see my red shirt again in all its glory. Yep, you guys can see it happening. And we're gonna get this right back and see if we can make it work and see if this works. Okay, I think and hope, yep, okay. I don't know why it's doing that, but I've figured out a little bit of a strategy for fixing it, but we're almost done. You guys, we're gonna do the gilded leafing, we're gonna do the drawings for prizes, and we're good. So you guys hang tight for just a second, because I think you can hear my voice throughout the whole thing. So I'm gonna set this flower off to the side. If somebody can help me remember to come back to it, that would be good. I don't wanna forget about it. So gilded leafing, the heat and stick powder. So I showed you the liquid glue, we're gonna let it dry. Now we're gonna do the heat and stick powder. So that is just like embossing, embossing. So the heat and stick powder comes in a little jar like this. And I have this old timer stamping up tray that's good for shaking it into. I have something called an embossing buddy. They don't sell it anymore, but I had it. It helps with static electricity. It helps with like if you have oils on, your fingers. I rub that over that first. If you guys don't have it, a dryer sheet could work too. What you're trying to do is just make sure the surface area is nice and clean. So if you guys could give me some thumbs ups. I know you're saying it froze and I see that, but I want to make sure you guys are still good now. So I have here what we use for class was this clipboard and we're going to use, oh, there's a Versamark. I have one. Perfect. Good. So the thing with the gilded leafing is that the more gooey sticky that you have, the more the gold is going to stick. And if you saw on my first sample here that I had a lot, it was just really thick. I figured out that less is best. So this little guy right here is the inside of the flower. And normally I like to press nice, solid, even good pressure like that. Well, if I do that, that's going to make a lot of air surface area for the heat and stick powder to stick on. So this is one of the cases where I'm just going to be very tap, 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 light to the touch. Okay. You guys are, you guys are good to go. I figured out how to fix that technology thing. I don't know why it wants to go away, but I'm, I'm tapping on my Versamark 
And now I'm gonna gently Bentley put a little bit on here. Not very hard, I, it just was very light. And I'm gonna flip the stamp and have it go the other way. Okay, that was it. That was it for the verse mark. So we're gonna move this out of the way and I'm going to pour the heat and stick powder on here. And I put it in the tray and I try to capture as much as I can right back into here. And then I shake off any extra. Now, you guys can see it's a little bit white there, that, that powdery, that's the heat and stick powder. I shut this up and I'm gonna move it off to the side because we don't need it anymore. I'm gonna have my heat or my, my gilded leafing right here. So this is where you need your heat gun, your heat tool. And what they, I mean, it's gonna get loud <laughs> and hopefully it doesn't disrupt technology or the internet, but this is the heat tool. There's an on button, I'm gonna turn it on and I'm actually gonna heat it from the bottom up and you'll see it hopefully that it turns from white to clear. So I'm not gonna say much while this is on because I'm not gonna try to over talk it. But just watch it go from white to clear. And that's it. Okay, so that heated it up. Now, don't go fast because you don't want this stuff to fly all over, but you also gotta, it's gotta be warm. But I'm just gonna go like this. Hi, Karen. And then you flip this in here. Okay, I have a brush that is a very bristly brush. It's not, I'm, br you guys can tell I just breathed, I breathed on it <laughs> and it like wanted to fly all over it. Bristly brush. So watch that, it's sticking to this. If you use a soft brush, it just, it won't work quite as good. So the more brushing you do, the more it'll come off. But you're just trying to get yourself, um, so heat and stick powder, Angela, it leaves it sticky and tacky so that stuff will stick to it. Where embossing powder, it will just be smooth and glossy. Hi, April. So it's, it's, there's a difference. The heat and stick powder leaves it sticky so that stuff can stick to it. So you can see there it's stuck where I have the gold. Just a little bit. So, I mean, you can use any stamps you want with the heat and stick powder and the Versamark to put, add gold onto it. So you guys, I'm gonna shut this up because I don't need it all over the place. I mean, it's pretty, but I don't want it all over. <laughs> okay, I ho hopefully Angela, that answered your question. So had I used embossing powder, it would not stick to it. Like it would have, it would have nothing to stick to. There's a residual stickiness in there. So the next thing, so if you guys have tear and tape at home that is an eighth of an inch versus this is one's a quarter of an inch. So Stampin' Up! sells quarter inch. But I know in class last night I had a couple gals that brought their one eighth because I told them that it, it works better with one eighth. But you can definitely use the quarter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel off what I think I'm gonna need for right here and I'm gonna put half of it on. So this is the tear and tape. But what sounds, oh, I just pulled it all the way off. <laughs> I was trying to get it straight. If you guys do this up into the light, you can kind of see a shadow. Okay, so I've got half of it on. Grab your glue scissors, so not ribbon, glue. I'm not gonna worry about the ends right now, but if you can cut this straight, you can use the other half for the other side. So there's half, and now you can flip this over. Hi, Kathleen. And you can use, I would go for the straight edge on the bottom and put this right along the bottom here, okay? Voila, so far so good. Now I would trim your tails <laughs> like we wish we could do in real life, like that. Okay, so tails off them over here. Oh, that's my thank you. Nope, that's my thank you. Ha ha. <laughs> all right. Then I'm also going to peel this off right now. Don't worry. It's all good. 
or pick that side off. Now we're gonna get a piece of tear and tape for the other side. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. Go over the edge of that one and try to get it as straight as possible. And this time, let's see here, we're gonna flip it over. It might have gone just a little bit much on the one side, but that's okay. We're gonna make it work. You definitely don't wanna have any overhang. I'm trying, and I'm trying to use the vanilla piece as a guide. So like that. And now if you do, now if you cut yours bad and it doesn't work, you'll just grab yourself a new piece and you can just throw that away. And so now I'm gonna line this up over on this side. And I made it a little long so that I wouldn't have to worry about coming too short at the end. So there's that. And now we're gonna trim our tails. And then we're going for the gold, girls and boys. <laughs> okay, glue scissors. That's why you have a glue scissors, so that you can cut gluey things. Okay, bristly brush is here on standby waiting for us. And peel off your... So this is why I did not do gilded leafing for any of your kits, guys. I have no idea how you would even ship gilded leafing. I don't know how it would work to send gilded leafing in the mail. This is ready though, this is tacky. The gilded leafing is gonna stick right to it. You don't have to worry about heating anything up. I'm not gonna try to breathe really hard <laughs> so it doesn't go all over the place. I'm a big huffer puffer here. The slower, the better. And now dip this in here, just like that. And watch, it's gonna be a hot mess of gold flaking, okay? And you're like, oh, that's ugly. <laughs> well, grab your bristly brush and start brushing it, trying not to breathe too hard. Get the bulk of it off. So, it's gonna be big flakes yet here, all over. You can use your fingers, but I like to use the brush first because it keeps your oils from your finger out of the gilded leafing. A Ziploc bag, okay. So you could have, I could have sent some in a Ziploc bag, but guys, I did not want to deal with the mess. And I figured if you guys liked gilded leafing, you could get your own, gotta get some gilded leafing, right? So um, it is carrying over to the new catalog. I know it just got off, um, I know some people, it was on back order for the longest time. There is a, something right there. I gotta get that off of there. Um, it was on back order for the longest time. And I think some people got theirs and then all of a sudden I think it got depleted again. So I'm just brushing this. Now, now when I've got the majority of it off, I will take my fingers and I'm just gonna go around it, around the horn with treble horn. Okay, and then that will help get off any of the last stuff here. It's gonna get on your fingers, and that's okay. Then you just take a wet wipe and wipe them off, but that's what you end up with. So if you don't have gilded leafing at home, you and you have gold embossing powder, yeah, Angela, it might be a good time to wear a mask so you don't breathe in all the gold flecks, right? Um, if you um, don't have the gilded leafing at home and you're looking for the gold look, and you have gold embossing powder, what you could do to make that edging, you could take and rub, and do it in two sections maybe, you could take your Versamark pad and rub the two sides, and then pour the gold embossing powder over, heat that up, and then you could do the other side. And you could use gold embossing powder too for that inside. All right, oh, we're not done, hang on, hang on. So I don't know how long it's been, but I did put that glue on here and it is, it's pretty dry, okay, it's tacky. So it created a stick. So let's do, this is the third way. If you if anybody else knows how else you can get gilded leafing on paper without it being a mess. You know, I got the liquid glue, the tear and tape, anything that's tacky. You don't want liquid, but you want tacky. So this will stick then to where I put that liquid glue and we'll see what it looks like. But a bristly brush, guys, not a soft one, a more firm, stiff one, <laughs> okay? 
I'm going to show you what that looks like, but I'm going to close this up so we don't have any accidents here. Okay. So there is how you could get some gold accenting on using liquid glue and just letting it dry. So, oh, we got to go that way and that way. There it is. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we had liquid glue, tear and tape, Versamark with heat and stick powder. So that's what we got going on for for the Gilda Leafing. Now, let's finish putting the card together. So, I've got to figure out here. So, this is our base. Now, you had some ribbon over here. I <laughs> I really went into depth this Tuesday for my Tip Tuesday because I was having this class, so a lot of that stuff was fresh in my mind. So, I'm going to trim my tail here at an angle. I don't know if you guys... My mom cut all your ribbons for you, so I don't know. I think she cut them probably square, like a straight edge, but I would trim at an angle like that. And then we're gonna grab some tear and tape. A craft toothbrush, that's awesome, Christy. Yup, that would work great. I'm gonna use tear and tape here, and we're gonna put it right, oh, I'm gonna cover up that spot. Where? Well, I don't know why there was a spot on my paper, but there was, but I knew that we were gonna be putting ribbon down here. and. I'm gonna pick that off and then this ribbon goes down something like that I'm not gonna secure it tight because I want to see where my thank you sits just like that okay cool now we're gonna do a sandwich only on the one side of this and flip that over you can trim off any extra and then on this one also I'm only gonna use it as a single-sided tape so I'm not gonna put I'm not gonna peel it off we're going to grab the dimensionals, throw them all over the back of this, and remember it doesn't go where the waxy tear and tape is, so I'm going to put two of them there, so it's around there. Well, you guys like all those tips for the Gilded Leafing. Well, if anybody else has anything that they can share with the Gilded Leafing, you could post it here or come, like let us know we can, so we all can learn more. And this goes like that. <laughs> okay. You guys are going to be seeing my mystery card in a moment. And you're going to be like, she totally cased this card for her mystery card. And then it's true. All right. Thank you is going to go right about here. And I am also going to pop that up with a few dimensionals. Some little babies. And I did not add... It was so weird putting your kits together because I didn't put any pearls. I didn't put, because this, with the Gilded leaf, Leafing, you don't really need any other accents to it. Like you don't, it's just, maybe I should have put some pearl, some gold Gilded, um, those Glimmer Gems in yours in case you guys don't have Gilded Leafing. I don't know. So I just shared a new post today for the class card challenge for the, this month. I can't wait to see what your cards look like if you ended up getting Gilded Leafing or if you didn't, what, what you used in place of it. But there we go, fourth card. So let's pull them all out. Tell me your favorite one. Do you guys have a favorite? Hi, Angie Liner. Angie was here in class last night and she made these. So, oh man, I like they're just so cool. Like all of them, I, I think... Mine are between these two because I just love the flowers there. I'm more of a peacock and the Merlot fan. But this one with the navy was a super cool card co color to add to this. And then the red was just, it pops so much. So, yeah, it's, they're good. So that was our fine art floral class, guys. Just a reminder, I have like five sets left. I'm afraid to move fast because the internet gets disrupted. But I have, these are the card kits. You would get all the stuff, all the paper products, all the embellishments, anything except for I said the gilded leafing. So you um, you can make your own at home. If you don't have the fine art floral stamp set, you could always improvise and get something else. Um, I'm afraid to go get the fine art floral set. I wonder where I even... Right. Oh, you guys, give me one second because I didn't show you this. I'm afraid if the internet goes slow. Oh. Hmm. I 
was afraid to move because the camera goes crazy when I move. Okay, so this is what, I didn't show this to you earlier because I didn't grab it, but this is what, it's called Art Gallery. So these are our two bigger stamps for the big flower and the leaf. That was the one we used Versamark on the blue card, and that was the one with the poppy card. So you guys are loving the peacock, the first one. All are beautiful, cool. Now, they did get rid of itty bitty greetings, itty bitty birthdays, and itty bitty Christmas. But what I did notice is they came out with other stamp sets that have those like little small sentiments, but this one has all of these. It has, sorry, thank you, best wishes, you are lovely, I'm thinking of you, happy birthday, good luck, congratulations, I miss you. Lots of little words to add to the front of your cards. And then the dies, there was actually a die for this one. So that cut out, that cut out this stamp right here. That cut out that other weird stamp that we use on the blue card. I just want to say was in here the two labels that were for the rectangles and then the flower and the leaf. So there was, it was just, it was pretty and it was fun to use this. It was just a lot of fun. So if you guys are wondering what's coming up for next month for the sweet bundle class that I am doing, it's Hydrangea Haven. And if you're in my VIP group, you'll have a, have a chance to win this at half off. And then the four cards that we're going to be making, it's April 22nd. So for those of you that do the online version with me, it's in, what, one, two, three weeks from tonight. It'll be the, um, this card. Again, I use a little bit of the Rococo Rose. This one using the Seaside Spray. So here, no stamping except for a sentiment, guys. This one, no, nothing except for a sentiment. And this one I designed too with all you need is a sentiment. And then this one's the only one where you'll need to have some sort of a leaf. I'll die cut your leaf out for you and I'll give you a piece of white, but, and you'll need a sentiment for the, or uh, a little stamp for the sentiment. But this one's a fun fold that opens like this and then the inside is like that. So, so that one's a little bit of a fun fold. Um, I have 60 kits that I'm prepping and I think that I have 50 signed up. So I'm not sure if I'll make more than 60 or if I'm gonna keep it at 60, but this is next month's uh, sweet bundle class. And then come May, it's gonna be well suited and I haven't designed those cards yet. That is my goal to work on this weekend. Or I'm off tomorrow. Yay! <laughs> I forgot about that till right now. I don't have to work tomorrow on work work. So I'm going to be working on my goal is to make the well-suited cards. So I should be sharing them with you soon then. <laughs> so that's my plan. Okay. We have some winnings to give away. <laughs> some, some prizes. Let me grab my sheet. I gotta find my sheet so I know what I think I gotta give away. We're gonna do a bunch of the random number generator things and see once who can win. So are you guys ready for it? Drum roll. I know Diane Bogenhagen's not watching and she's always the one that goes with the on the table. So all right. Christy can't wait for the hydrangea. I know. I got you and Kay both signed up for that one. Okay, so we have a couple things, a bunch of things. I'm gonna announce the monthly creative challenge. So what we decided to do for the monthly creative challenge and the class card challenge um, is we took everybody's name and we put them in to the drawing and it's not based off, it's as long as you followed the rules, that was what was important. So for the monthly creative challenge, um, you don't need a hydrangea stamp, Judy Bobo, no. <laughs> Not really. You could do sponging for that leaf too. You could sponge that leaf green and it would be perfectly fine. You wouldn't have to have the leaf stamp. I've gotten really creative and I don't know if this is good or bad, but I've gotten really creative with designing cards that don't, that you just need sentiments for. It's more die cutting and embossing and showing off that kind of stuff, but it's like, it makes it very appealing to people who want to do the online class can Kelly provide the recipe for the hydrangea card from Tip Tuesday, please? Leslie, ask her. <laughs> I might forget, but I'll try to remember. But if you could um, post in the comment, just make sure you tag her. That would be good. Or send her a, a Facebook message. Um, we'll see once if she can. Um, from the hydrangea card. I think that was from last Tuesday. So um, I don't know if that's good or bad with the the stamping, but it really appeals to people who, if you don't necessarily have these stamps, then you could still make the cards with me and use whatever sentiments you have. So this one with the art floral, it was really hard. 
Um, so what I did with the hydrangea is I stamped the hydrangeas on the inside of the card so that, um, and I don't even know if I did it on all of them, but I stamped the hydrangea on the inside so that it was being used. I don't know if I did it on, oh, I did it on one of them, but I really loved using the paper um, with the dies. It just, it was so much prettier to me than stamping it. So, um, so Kay said for the gilded leafing, she used a coffee filter and rubbed it on the dryer. It went well with little static. Oh, perfect. Oh, that was a little thing that we talked about last night in class too. You can put a dryer sheet, tape a dryer sheet to the top of your inside of your container. And that will also help. Um, Melanie wants to see the acetate in person because you're still on the fence. Get off the fence. You're going to get splinters, girl. <laughs> They hurt, and the more you debate, the bigger they get. <laughs> so, all right, so for the monthly and the um, class card challenge, as long as for the monthly creative challenge, you use the right theme, we put your name in, and then for the class card challenge, as long as it was a class that was a paid for class, then we put your name in. So, monthly creative challenge winner is Tammy Steckling. Woohoo! Tammy, um, we did that drawing before I mailed out your package this morning. Um, we did the drawing this morning and your package went out at 4.30. So I tucked in some of the flower centers, they were called, which are, they look like fuzzy yellow so that you can put them in the center of your flowers. So your prize is already on the way to you. You might even have it tomorrow or Saturday. So congratulations, Tammy. Uh, for the class card challenge winner, it was Pam Newhauser. Woohoo, Pam. She had a a picture of the frame that she made from the celebration celebration that you had to earn a spot to get. So her name was for that one. So congratulations, Pam. I don't know if you're watching, but you have a, uh, the white flax ribbon. I had an extra one of those and I put your name on and it's in the mudroom. So wonderful. And drum roll for the newsletter. Newsletter winner goes to Christy Warren. And her favorite color that is retiring is Pretty Peacock. We had about 11 people that submitted an entry for their favorite color for the in colors that were retiring. So congratulations to Christy. So Christy, you won a $10 gift certificate with me. So that means that the next time you place an order... Uh, I will reimburse you. It's kind of like a Menards rebate. Once you place your order, um, tell me that you want to use your $10 gift certificate. And basically I will, I think you, um, I think you PayPal, <laughs> PayPal friends and family. I'll just send you $10 via PayPal friends and family. And then we'll be good to go. So congratulations to Christy. So how the newsletter works is every month I write a newsletter and it has lots of good information in it. And I put in a hidden secret. It's not always form, formed or phrased like a question. So I'm sneaky. So I'll put in there to be entered into the drawing for the newsletter. Please tell me what your favorite in color that, uh, that is retiring. So it's not a question, but sometimes, you know, I, I you know, so yes, because otherwise people could copy or um, control find and look for the question marks throughout the newsletter and really find it without looking at the newsletter. So <laughs> I try to be a little bit sneaky. <laughs> so, okay. So, so Christy was the winner of the newsletter and then the drawing, and then the next one will be coming out in the next few days. Okay, guys, mystery cards. Are you ready to see my mystery card now that I have the inside done? <laughs> I was a slacker. Okay. Let's flip this down. Okay, you guys, here's my card. Okay, so I totally looked at this card right here while I was making this one. And I didn't remember to do my inside at the time. So this goes on the inside here like that, okay? And so in here, I told you guys, I think I alluded to this on Monday night that I did the gilded leafing around the edge like that. And I did the gilded leafing here, and then I added three of those little glitter gold things. I put my sentiment on the right hand side, like more like this, and I you know flush over here. The ribbon's the exact same way, and I actually did put a uh, dimensional here. So you guys are asking where you can find the newsletter. I'll show you in a second, but it's cardsbychrisb.com. Okay, cardsbychrisby.com, and I will show it to you. So here is 
that mystery card. And that is the Art Floral Designer Paper. It was just so, thanks Angela for pointing out where the newsletter is. I appreciate you writing that. So I just love this paper so much. So that's my mystery card. All right, so we had Kelly, I'm gonna have to look here real quick. So I can't watch comments for a second, but I'm gonna show you guys here um, where the newsletter is. And then I'm gonna show you how many people we had. So real quick, for those that are new, my website, Cards by Chris B., when you go in here, you go to, at the top, let's, oh, let's see if I make sure that I'm in my right internet. Yep, oh, no, I'm not. Let's get to the right. So my I have two internets, one in my house and one in here. So it goes super, there it is. So if you go to cardsbycrispy.com and under blogs and blog and news, click on newsletters. In the newsletter section, you'll find my class schedule and you'll find uh, the last chance list. And you'll also find, what else was in here, guys? <laughs> like the carryover list, the Hey Chick. Okay. Oh, and that's where the newsletter is. So I don't have April in here, but March 2021. You click. So I do always the first little blurb as the written part. But then you can click on the actual link and it takes you right into the newsletter. So there's a lot of information in there usually every month. And one of the ways that I, I encourage people to read it is by giving away prizes, right? So, okay. All right. So let's see if I can get back to what we got to find. So we're going to do mystery cards. So Kelly is in charge of keeping track of everybody who shared a card. So if you shared a card, you got your name in. So we had one through 50, 71. We had, so I'm going to do three prizes. So I do one prize for every about 20 to 25. So we had 71 people share. And so I'm going to show some prizes what I have. If anybody happens to be watching right now and you can tell me right away, um, then you can let me know what you want. Here's the white flax ribbon. I think I gave Pam Newhouser the, <laughs> a different ribbon, but there's white flax ribbon. I've got this really cool vinery green ribbon. It's actually leaves on a vine. I've got a pineapple punch ink pad. I've got some in color faceted gems that go with the colors that are retiring. I've got some pearlized doilies and I've got some silver and gold doilies. And just so you guys know, when I ship these out, I will probably take the cardboard out so that I can put it in an envelope. That helps for shipping. So we have 71 people. What I do for the prize I go to random number generator and we have one through 71. Drum roll, guys. All right, I hit generate and then it tells me a number and we'll flip back and we'll see who won. Number seven. Number seven is. Da -da -da -da! We have Carolyn Denstad. All right. So Carolyn, I'm not sure if I saw your name pop up that you're watching. If you're not watching, don't worry. I'll pick something for you and I'll pop it in the mail for you. So let's move on to the next winner. So we're gonna hit generate again here. And number 26 is our winner. Winner, chicken dinner. Number 26 goes to Laura Johnson. Laura Johnson, you are a lucky winner right now. So if you are watching, you can let me know if you have a preference. And then we're going to go and click again. Number 37 is our winner this time. 37. Genevieve Duchesne. <laughs> if I didn't butcher that, thank goodness. But if I did, I apologize. Genevieve Duchesne. Now, here's my disclaimer, guys. If you're not in the United States and I mail your prize to you, then I ask that you cover the cost for international shipping. So if it's uh, uh, something like the gems or the doilies that I can fit in an envelope, it's only $1.25 to mail the letter. But if it's a package, then I'll ask for you to reimburse or you can have me pick somebody else to be a winner. So that's how I, my disclaimer for international in case, because I don't know where you guys are all from anymore. I Sometimes no, but I have a lot of people, not a lot, but I have some people that watch from Australia and Canada, so that's pretty cool. Okay, now, are you guys ready for the top fan? Woohoo! Who wishes they were a top fan winner? <laughs> we have 55 people that are top, oh, let's flip down here. 
So you guys can see we have 55. So we're gonna flip this over and put this to be 55. Five, five, it's the law. Ready, one, two, three, drum roll, generate. Number 22, Kathy Cornea, woohoo! You are a lucky winner for being a top fan. You guys, I appreciate your support so much. When you're a top fan, that means that you like, you comment, and you share a lot. So let's hit generate again. Oh my gosh, it moved right to 26. Gene Maxwell, you are a lucky winner for being a top fan. Congratulations. I'm not sure if you signed off for dinner or if you're back. Um, I was going to show you guys. What was I going to show you? Oh, how I see where Top Fan is. I can show you guys this. In Top Fan, there is, I'll show you how I see it and wh where it is in my page. If you go to my community right here under community, that is where I see who the Top Fans are. You guys, we went from 2,000 to 2,039 likes in the last two weeks. So we grew by 40. Isn't that crazy? So this is where I can see, like, Luann, you were saying you lost your top fan. Um, this is where I can see all the top. This is where I go to get my top fans. So I would see your name in here if you were a top fan. I don't know. So Danny mentioned it earlier about the setting. So um, if you're not a top fan and you're trying to figure out why you're not a top fan anymore, you could definitely do a little research based off of what she said to see if you can become a top fan again. So what did we forget? I always think of something at the end that I wish I would have said or I wish I would have talked about, but um, I don't know. It's Easter this weekend. I didn't even ask you guys what you were doing for Easter. I'm curious. Are you guys getting together and having a dinner or a brunch, having ham or beef tips? So I mentioned on a live uh, recently that my my brother Tom said he'd only come home if my mom made beef tips. So my mom is making beef tips, which I love beef tips, but she's also making ham because my dad wants ham. My mom is an angel because she likes to accommodate everybody's eating styles. So um, so my brother will be in town tomorrow night and we're going to do some games, I think, and have fun with him. And then my other brother and his girlfriend will be around on Sunday. So it'll be um, a little bit of a family gathering for us. So awesome. And April said you have your mom there. That's awesome. All right. Let's see here. Let's, I lost, and I got to get back to see the comments. So Shannon is spending with her dog or D, 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 G. I think you meant dog. Dad, your dad. <laughs> All right. Oh, Linda is social isolating. Yes. And that is still happening too. So you guys just do whatever, whatever you need to do. And if you can be stamping or crafting or being creative, do that too. So um, that is definitely what it's all about is stamping and crafting. And I know Linda said that she's been doing a lot of stamping and crafting this last year. Just stamping and being creative and crafty is just a very therapeutic thing. And it just helps make my mind happy. So takes my mind off of the other things. <laughs> so, oh, Jean's getting her second shot. I talked to you the day you were getting your first shot. I think it was last Friday. So that's good. My mom got hers Wednesday. So she was able to get in. So awesome. Arliss is catching the end. So you'll want to be on the loop. I showed off your card, Arliss, that I got in the mail. So all right. That was a lot of everything in a nutshell. So be watching for my newsletter, The Scavenger Hunt. And I'm also hosting an in-color club, so I don't know how that's gonna work so much so well for people with the mail, but maybe we could figure something out. Um, I do an in-color club every year where you get one color one month, another color the second month, and then one month you're the host, it is, and it's a five-month club. And we'd figure out something. So if anybody's interested, we just figure out what the postage is for shipping it to you, and then you're a hostess one month. So anywho, watch for that in the newsletter. And all right, I'm looking around. Like normally I set things around me and then I don't forget things. So you guys have a great weekend. Enjoy it, whatever you're doing and have a good Easter. And we will be here Monday night. You guys, we're doing the kangaroo class with the Stamparatus. That class is full. Kelly just took my last kit, a different Kelly, not Kelly Lamb, <laughs> a different Kelly, just took my last kit today. It got mailed out. So I don't have any sets of that left. But remember, if you're looking for art floral or to do game night with me, then I will... Be happy to send you kits in the mail, but we'll see you on Monday night. And before we do the kangaroo cards, I'll show you guys all the prizes for game night. So lots of sunshine and hugs and love to you guys. See you later. Bye.